Getting, uh, okay, I'm live. Hank Strange. I know this looks a little weird. It's like a nondescript white wall behind me. This is the Big Daddy Gun Studio. Yes, that's right. Big Daddy Guns has come on board as a sponsor of the Hank Strange situation, which is cool. We need as much support as we can get out there. The really, really big thing that's going on here is Big Daddy Guns is providing us a studio, the broadband, and everything that we need to start broadcasting to the world live 24-7. I've got access to this place all the time. It's in Gainesville. There's going to be a lot more of this going on. I haven't really announced it. So anyone who's watching this, you're getting like the scoop right now, unless you're like, unless you're supporting me on Patreon. So all the folks that support me on Patreon, they already have gotten some a few clues about this. So if you're not supporting me on Patreon, what's wrong with you? Jump on there, help us out. We need the support so that we can, you know, keep this going. We need to have our own platform and talk about the things that we want to. Okay, so now let's get into what we're going to talk about tonight. Tonight we are going to be discussing Voda Consulting. And we're going to be talking about whatever happened at Voda Consulting. So now, if you're a gun guy, you should have heard something about this because I've been getting a lot of questions. So there's a gentleman, Lucien Black, and he is a firearms trainer, and he's, I guess, been doing some very radical things out there. There's lots of people complaining about him. There's lots of talk. It's on fire. Everyone's calling me up because when, I guess, in the gun world, when black people do something wrong, they get in touch with Hank Strange and say, what's up, Hank Strange? What say you about this whole thing? So I have looked into it a little bit, but I figured the best thing to do is to actually have the man himself, Lucian Black, come down. So I'm gonna I'm gonna let him introduce himself in a minute. But first, I want to talk to James McCoy of the Urban Sharpshooters Gun Club. Is that right, James? Did yes, I say? Thanks for having me on your show, sir. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome, man. Thanks for coming on here. So. You, you know, the Urban Sharpshooters had something to do with this. Just a little bit of a uh, backstory here. You guys have been around for what now, like uh, four or five years? We've been on social media for about four or five years, but we've actually been out since 2000, I'm sorry, 1996. Okay, 1996. Okay, so, you know, I think that we both started around the same time. I remember you guys asking me to, uh, you know, help support you, get the message out. And I think it's a good idea. Uh, I want to encourage everyone to get into guns. Guns are for everyone. And, um, you know, with you specifically, you guys are encouraging black people to get into guns. Is that right? That's right. Our whole mission started out and we saw a need to provide firearms education and training in the community. That's something that when you got outside of the black community, you see any people, you see other gun clubs. But because we live in the inner city where gun laws are a little more restrictive, people are a little too hesitant to um, exercise their Second Amendment freedoms and rights. So that's okay. where we came in. We taught people that it's okay to buy guns, it's okay to go out and shoot guns just like everybody else. Okay. So um, can you give us a little bit of a backstory and how you guys relate to Voda Consulting and Lucian Black before we have him come on and introduce himself? I met Vada or Lucian Black through the internet, believe it or not. Facebook is a handy tool. Um, I have family that live in North Carolina, and they told me about this nut that was going around training people how to use firearms. But in his <laughs> training classes, he actually used real guns. So it put okay. my attention. I'm like, wait a minute, he's using real guns? And they're like, sure. There are videos on social media, media circulating where he's actually pointing these firearms at you know his clients or students, and they point them at him. Um, I was so fascinated with this guy, I shared it on the Urban Sharpshooters page, and at that time I was a member of the African American Gun Club page, not realizing that people was going to use this for slander. Um, after doing so, that's when all heck broke loose, and he became the scum of the earth, the worst firearm instructor that ever existed, because many people assumed that the firearms that he was using hadn't been checked to be safe and clear. Um, I then saw him being attacked by the firearms community and i had he and shanine allen to come up to maryland to have a training class just so we could see for ourselves what was going on and not what was being said on the internet okay okay so that's good so that's how you so basically how long have you been involved with him um we, we've been in a partnership for around two years now two um, years when, when vada came here 
actually in this living room where I'm sitting, um, he did a classroom session, then we did two range sessions. Um, I took him around the DMV, which means the District of Maryland and Virginia, to some of the top instructors in the area. And um, he was evaluated, and not one instructor gave him the thumbs down. The only okay. thing they recommended is that as he's doing his unique instruction, maybe he give a little more, you know, be a little more descriptive as to what's going on. But other than that, nobody that I took him around had anything negative to say about what he was doing after they've seen him in the range conducting the training class. Okay, cool. Okay, so I'm going to come back to you in a minute. I want to I want to have Lucien, um, you know, tell us about himself. I'm sure folks out there are seeing him uh, moving around. It looks like he just switched from wherever he was to the car. So Lucien, tell us who you are and uh, what is, uh, am I saying it right, Voda Consulting? Yeah, don't worry about it. It's all good. Everybody already know what it is. You can see the V, the O, the D, the A. You know what it is. You see the flower. You see the henny. That's what's going on, right? Uh, my face look greasy because it's still hot out here, and uh, I ain't, you know, <laughs> ain't all uh, fresh with it, but I still sexy. So, what is Vada? Vada is freedom. Vada is inspiration. It is possibilities. It is exploration. That's what Vada is. Um, this is what happened, you uh, I've been teaching going on seven years. Okay. And when I first started, you know, getting in, you know, just really saying I'm going to commit to this thing or whatever, I was, you know, like everybody else, like, hey, man, that man is really good, and this person is really good. Until I started seeing the same thing over and over and over again. And I was like, wait a minute, hold on a second. At what point do we draw the line in the sand and say, okay, now this is training. What else is out there? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So when people come to, like, a session, do a session with me, I pull from a, a barrage of sources, whether it be Paul Castle, who is one of my favorite esteemed. Uh, people within the gun game right now, and I do mean gun game literally as a game because it really is it's a game of cat and mouse, really what it is. And um, Paul Castle has been very instrumental to me, even though he died of cancer. You know, my mother died of cancer. So many people have died of cancer, so that's very important to me. Uh, Louis Arbrock, uh, gunfighter, uh, South African military force. Uh, I pulled from Bopi, uh, Bopi down in Rio de Janeiro. I believe they are the hardest out that's ever going to be out. Some of the best that ever did it, the SAS. I also pulled from those guys as well. So I pulled from all of these sources and I put it in a way that the average everyday person can understand it. You okay. So let, so, yeah. Okay. So let me ask you this. Um, you, you are a firearms uh, training instructor, right? Let's, let's, let's change that. I, you know, because okay. I'm a beyond instructor. I'm an educator. That's just what it is. Okay. Okay. Today's so you're an educator. Okay. So do you have any, I mean, you know, can you, can you share with us a little bit, what's your background, uh, you know, in, in firearms and firearms training? Can you tell us something? Do you have a military background, law enforcement? What, what do you have going on here? Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through the last 15 years within about a minute or so. Okay. Uh, I started when I was 21. I worked in Chicago for a independent private contracting service. Uh, which provided uh, canine dogs for bombs and narcotic war. That's what I did. Okay. I uh, saw my first murder on the job within the first week. That's just what it was. From that point on, I moved on to the military, uh, became a 68 Mike. I don't know where these people getting this thing from. I, I was 11 Bravo or some special cause. No, I am a nutritionary care specialist slash cook. That's what it is. Okay. Uh, so you were in the military. What branch yeah. of the military were yeah. you in? Army, army, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. I always make the joke that if I would have waited 30 more minutes, I'd have probably went to the Air Force. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I understand that. Break. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it is what it is. Now, people want to say, they, they're like, well, how did you get all of this skill that you have if you were in the Army and you was essentially a cook or nutrition care specialist? I tell I tell like this. <laughs> What used to happen is the contractors used to come to the DFAT. At that time, it was Blackwater at the time. Okay. Before they, you know, had all the incident and they changed the academy. But I used to see them every day. They used to come in, you know, do pretty much what they really wanted to do, whatever. And I said, you know what? Getting was not enough. I was not satisfied with the military training I was getting on the weapon platform. Okay. I said, one day, how much would it cost for one of you guys 
to come out here and just work with me and make sure that I'm way more proficient than what I am. Training as a canine officer working, I got the little check, but these guys are a little bit better. And so the first guy looked at me, he was like, us. I was like, shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then um, the other guy was like, well, you want to do this? It's going to cost you another grand. So they were about the money, and that's okay, because that's what contractors do. So I got me a second job while I was in the military. I actually worked uh, for KFC, <laughs> mm-hmm. a soldier working at KFC. Okay. To save up my BAH and my BAQ was no enough, because I was married at the time, and uh, it was not enough. So I would say for months on end to ensure that I had this training. But what happened was down the line, seeing people in my community who needed training. Mm-hmm. The opportunity to get you no know, thousands of dollars in the rate rob and whatever the case may be. Okay. So I was like, I tell you what, let me help a little couple of people while I was in undergrad and that's how it started. Okay, so that's how you started training people. So what I'm trying to establish here, you know, just for people out there who are in, who are interested in this, I'm trying to establish like a timeline here of uh, your experience with firearms and how you got into training. You're saying basically you're in the army, but you weren't assigned to something that would be tactical, like a special operations or something that no, you know. No. The, the, so you didn't get more than like the basic training, right? Mm-hmm. Go ahead. I'm, I'm just trying to break the news to you. A lot of these, like, uh, units in the military, they ain't all tactical like they be saying it is. Mm-hmm. They just not. Um, I'm not saying all the units are like that because I can't speak for all, but for the majority of the ones I've seen at Fort Bragg, they ain't all tactical. Right. Military support. Right. I think I, I yeah. Than hardcore war. Right. Absolutely. And, absolutely. Uh, I agree. I, I agree with that. And I and I'm not trying to suggest that you have to have military experience in order to train people. I think there's lots of good trainers out there that don't have military experience. I'm just trying to step because what I want to do here is I really want to take my time and let you, you know, tell us your story and, and like kind of lay this out for people that's going on. So, I mean, you know, what you're saying that when you started training, there were contractors that were coming in and you trained with them separately. Right. Yeah. Okay. So are these some contractors that you can tell us who they are or, you know, give us a rundown of who you no. have trained with out there? No names. On okay. That. No names on that because uh, even even a very good friend of mine, um, for business reasons, mm-hmm. for business reasons, he had to stop, like, being with me on social media for business reasons because of all these haters. Okay. You see what I'm right. saying? Uh, he he is a mentor to me. He is one of the best in executive protection. I, like I, I want to say his name so bad, but I can't even say it because right when all of this happened, he started getting phone calls from people saying, "Oh, you with him?" and all this kind of thing, and asking him about it. I'm not gonna bring that kind of drama to him. But the only thing I can tell you is that you've seen him on TV. Okay, I understand that. I think the reason why I'm asking that question is because if, and I think this is just a practical thing for anyone out there, if you're going to get some training from anyone, you're going to try to look at their background and and assess. Look, I, I think that the way this whole training thing lines up is this. First of all, everyone getting into firearms needs to get some kind of training, right? You know, it's it's not just good enough for you to go out there and, and buy a firearm and, and carry it. You know, I think you should make that extra step of getting some training. Obviously, it's up to you. People can do whatever they want to. They can read books. They can look at videos. You know, but I think nothing really beats getting out there one-on-one with an instructor and getting training. And there's all different levels of this, and it depends on who you are and what you think you're going to be facing in in the real world out there. Um, And as well as it depends on the organizations it's coming from. So to me, the entry level organization with safety that I would point people to the most of the times when they get into guns would be the NRA. The NRA tends to focus like on safety. That's their thing. They want people to be safe, uh, you know, first and foremost of everything. And so you start off over there, right? And then there's higher and higher levels that you go to where you're doing more and more training. And that's uh, a lot of those things involved in that. It's not necessarily things that the NRA would sanction because of things, because of a lot of, it, it, like it violates a lot of what they say are their safety rules. But in, in the practical real world, if you get into things, I think we all realize that you're gonna do a lot of stuff in the real world if you have to save your life or defend somebody else's life that uh, there's gonna be some safety violations. So, you know, so these kind of things ramp up, 
right? So yeah. anyone, anyone who's looking to get into training with anyone, not just you, they need to check out who they're training with because I don't think this is really regulated out there other than maybe like organizations like the NRA, they have their classes that they give for instructors and they have their safety guidelines and then maybe there's a few other places that do that. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, mm -hmm. Hank. Mm -hmm. I, like, I agree with you 50% and I don't agree with you 50%. Okay, where do you, where do you disagree with me on that? I'm not trying to be negative or play the devil's advocate. No, I understand. I understand that. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm going to tell you why. Because someone can walk up to someone and be like, oh, I'm an active duty police officer. I can mm -hmm. train you how to shoot. That don't mean he can train you. That don't mean he can teach. You see what I'm saying? Right. It's Absolutely. a special kind of person that is able to teach. Anyone can come out here and say, okay, breath control, stance, trigger control, and all right, and press the trigger, right? An mm -hmm. uh, ape can do that. A caveman can do that. But mm -hmm. a special person it takes to reach someone on a cognitive level to make those wheels turn in the brain, to make those synapses start firing so they're able to understand exactly why and how the mechanics all come together. So why when they press in that trigger, they know exactly what they're doing. See, a police officer, I'm going to tell you right now, they got the worst hit rate with the military i ever seen in my life. If it was a business, they'd be out of business. And you don't believe me, I'll direct you to that police officer that shot that dude on the ground. Yeah, I think yeah, lots yeah, of I think I think no, I think no one out there in in the in the real world is going to argue that police officers need more training. And I don't think that someone being a police officer automatically qualifies them to be a teacher. I agree with you that it takes a special person to be a teacher. So you know, you're saying you're a teacher. I'm just trying to get like from you what you think qualifies you to be a teacher. What sets you apart? What sets me apart? Let's mm -hmm. talk about it. My mother, because I come from a great line of teachers, I'm telling you, and mm -hmm. I'm not just bragging, I mean, I'm being serious. My mother did uh, almost 30 years as a Chicago public school teacher. She's been teacher of the year numerous times. I have some of the finest martial arts instructors around the around this country that has taught me since I was nine years old. Okay. In private schools, I did ballet, fine arts. So I know what good instruction is. Okay, God, so you you I practice you practice a form of martial arts, right? Do you practice a form of martial arts? Do you, do you practice yes. a form of Spoken martial arts? Okay, so that's what you do. So what level are you in that? Did you did you get that? You're, you're breaking up some stuff. What is it now? Yeah, I said okay. So in that in that martial arts that you practice, what level are you? Is there like you know a, a belt? level that you're at and I'm a brown, belt. brown belt okay okay right okay i'm just trying to establish here like obviously when people t i think if you went somewhere to get instruction right or wrong you would like you know you would think something about whoever's giving you this instruction right yeah but you know a lot of time i've seen people who never had any instruction whatsoever and they're really good shooters like take amir the camera mm -hmm. guy who shot like the cameras for that beautiful uh, ECK EDA video, beautiful video. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have any uh, formal training whatsoever, and he is a great shooter. I've seen him work with people on the range. He's able to uh, connect with people to get them okay. to do things they've never been able to do. I mean, how do we explain that variable? No, I understand that. I think, uh, you know, it's got to start somewhere. I mean, it's just a chicken and egg thing. So let me ask James this. James, you know, when you when you met you you were talking about this a little bit before, but maybe you can elaborate on it. When when you met Lucian, you know, I'm trying to establish here, like, uh, you know, how do we look at him, him as a trainer? When you met him, did you look into it and say, like, let me see what qualifies this guy to teach, or is it that you just saw the stuff going on on YouTube and you were interested and you had him come in? Definitely. Before we brought him in, me online, chapter president. Because mm -hmm. I knew that some of the things that you did were so over time that it would cause like, one separation. Mm -hmm. so we okay, I think you need to come a little closer to the microphone. I'm not hearing you clearly. Okay, okay can you hear me better now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So what we did, I had a meeting with the chapter presidents. We brought him in. Uh, we had a vote to bring him in just so we could see who he was. So okay. um, the first initial contact, um, Jermaine Crandall, who's in Raleigh, North Carolina, he met up with Ambada. They went out to the range. Uh, we went over the thought process just to see if he was a okay. kind of frame of mind that he had. 
Mm -hmm. And um, Jermaine gave him the thumbs up. So I still had a few guys who um, wasn't completely sold, you know, on his capabilities because again, you really don't know a lot about the man, but you know what you see. So we right. so so can you girl. tell us? So can you tell us like what was it that you were impressed by? You know, I'm not I'm not trying to judge here. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to like put a gauge on it so that we can you know establish this point here. His his training tactics capture your imagination because he does things that no one else is doing, at least not on social media or in the public. And uh, okay. I think he dares to be different. Okay, so can you can you give me like a few of those things? Now, I, I know that traditionally, like, uh, you know, I've done some training with people. People don't always want to put everything out there that they do in training. I think here with, with Lucian, obviously, there's stuff that's been put out there, and I'm assuming that he put it out. So can you just like, you know, give us a little bit of that of like what impressed you and what you liked? What impressed me was his willingness to um, use extreme circumstances to to, uh, his approach is a little extreme because the people who he was dealing with may have done extreme circumstances. To say that he's unsafe because he used real firearms, not mm -hmm. knowing that the man actually had training pistols, but in the condition of some of his clients, he okay. felt that you should train the way you fight and fight the way you train. So the training pistols never got used for those classes. And whatever firearm they said that they would use for their personal defense, this is what he chose to do. Okay. So that so that's a good that's a good point right there. So and, and I think that this is part of what's out there with people, the fact that Lucian used the an actual firearm. Mm -hmm. So um and you were you're saying that you're impressed by that, right? I, I was very impressed by that because believe okay. it or not, my family is southern is from the south. My father, his brothers, all was next. And the way that they taught their sons and their sons taught us, we always use a real firearm and treat no firearms like their toys. So with him coming from that section of Fayetteville and looking at the conditions that they had to live in, most of his clients were scared. Some of them had been robbed. Some of them had been assaulted. So what he taught them to do was not to fear the gun and not to fear using the gun correctly and legally. Okay, so can you just tell us briefly before I go back to Lucian on this? Um, you know, what did you when you guys used these firearms? Were there any safety steps that were followed here? How, how did that unfold? Okay, so he comes up to Maryland. We go bring him here. He comes to the house, and the first thing I wanted to know. Make sure I, you stay close to the microphone, oh, please. Forgive me. So yeah. we bring him to the house, and we're looking at um, everything that we're going to do. And the first thing that I asked him, I said, "So how do you conduct your class?" And he was like, boss man, this is your house, but no ammunition can be in the room. So we went over the firearms that we were to use for this particular training class. We made sure that all the firearms had been cleared and safe. No ammunition was nowhere in the room at any time. Okay. So when we used those firearms, it was impossible for anyone to get hurt. And this is the way that he conducts all his training classes. Um, okay. I think looking outside in someone could get the impression that maybe he's sloppy because they don't know they don't hear that these firearms have been made safe mm -hmm. but in fact they were okay i understand so lucian so so tell us about that like so one of your practices in your classes is using like the actual firearms is that correct yes sir okay so can you just tell me your your thoughts behind that Did did, uh, did did he freeze here? <laughs> okay, it looks like uh, he looks like he froze up, James. Okay, so okay. let's he, he we we may have to wait for him to come back in. So okay, so he he's using the the actual he's using the actual guns, actual steel. Just make sure that the guns were clear. There was no ammo in the room. All that kind of stuff. Everything was safety checked, right? Definitely. And we okay. also had a projector mm -hmm. where uh, we went over the basic safety. Never point a firearm at anything that you can to see the story. All okay. kinds of to be, but we added something to it. And okay. In his class, is something that we kind of adopted for our version of firearms education training. All guns are considered loaded until they have been checked and cleared. Um, I think that's the standard operating procedure in the military, maybe even in law enforcement. Mm -hmm. um, when I took basic pistol, that was one thing that we had to do 
is to demonstrate how to make the weapon or firearm safe and how to make the firearm ready. And uh, that's one aspect that is often overlooked, especially okay. when you're coming into the conversation and making the discharge. Right. So while we're waiting for while we're waiting for Lucian to sign back in because it looks like he dropped out. So here's what I want to ask you. How did this uh, were you this particular thing that got out there? Because if you search voter consulting, uh, one of the things I see is this video, I think, of him pointing a, a firearm like this. It looks like a pistol and he's pointing it at uh, at a uh, what looks like a you know, it looks it's a woman. He's pointing that at her. Were you were you guys there or is that a separate incident? That, that's a separate training class, but I would okay. have to say this is what probably caused the firestorm. Because you had a guy, God bless the dead, his name is Bob Owens, a bearing arms. Okay. Bob saw this story and he ran with it. He said that it broke every law in firearm safety and he deemed him the world's worst instructor. Okay. From there, you had other instructors all across the country. So it probably started out harmless where they was going to make jokes about him. Um, and then it got real personal. He came out and he said that, you know, his technique worked for him and their technique worked for their application. So it became a right versus wrong, a fingerprint context, a name okay. calling context. So when okay, so let's uh, let's go back to um, Bob Owens here. I mean, now obviously Bob Owens is no longer with us. You know, he's not able to come in here. You know, but he's so. But you're saying he's involved in this story. So, um, you know, from my point of view, I want to make sure that we try to like get that out as as well as we can because, as I said, he's not here to for us to at, at any point uh, find out from him what was going on. So. Well, yeah. that, that that article still exists in social media. Um, mm -hmm. All you got to do is go, go go back and Google it, and it mm -hmm. opened up Pandora's box because mm -hmm. it then questioned. Okay, so the, the so the articles is titled "World's Worst Firearms Instructor Stripped of Credentials." Yeah. So what so what exactly? Uh, here, I'm going to try to pull up the article while we're talking. But go ahead and tell me what what this is all about here. What's going on? So basically. I call it a rush to judgment because mm -hmm. looking outside in, you see this guy who no one knows, and he's instructing people to use real firearms and pointing them at each other. Um, no one know that before the class that he had given those firearms safe. There mm -hmm. are no no ammunition is allowed. In fact, he was an NRA certified instructor there in North Carolina concealed carry, and this is the reason why he was doing this is because he was teaching those clients how to carry those firearms concealed and actually not be afraid to use them. What okay. we heard sometimes is firearms give people a false sense of safety. A mm -hmm. lot of people think, especially new shooters, that if I go buy a firearm, I'm good. I will never have to use it. The bad guy will leave me alone just because I have it. And that's wrong. So what he did, he took it a step further. He said, hey, look, you bought this firearm because you were concerned about your safety. Now I'm going to teach you how to be safe with the firearm and use it and not go to jail. Okay. So now, so this this article, I'm looking at it here on Bearing Arms. It looks like it was posted November 16th, uh, 2015. Right. So now what is it that, you know, because I, I think this happens a lot in the gun community and even in the firearms training community, that there's people that do things. Sometimes they do those things deliberately for attention or sometimes this is just what they do as this is their particular practice and uh, their way of dealing with guns. You know, I, I've had a friend of mine uh, that is a trainer say that basically guns is a martial art as well and if it's a martial art there's lots of different kinds of martial arts everyone practices their own kind and this kind of thing happens from time to time where people look at how you know how trainers practice and they complain about it and sometimes it serves you know i know it, like there's negative things in there but it serves as being like promotion because you know if these guys don't talk about you then no one hears about you and so how did you guys take this thing? What what is it that Bob Owens posted in here that you were offended by? You know what? You know how did how did you or how did he see it? Obviously, we're waiting for him to uh, you know come back in here. So it, it, exactly from from my point of view, at this point, I had no person, and 
and this is when the climax of the drama really started to take place. Mm -hmm. um, that is. There we go. Yeah. And part of what we're talking about is when Bob Owens wrote the article about just being the world's worst instructor. And then the worst instructor became the most unsafe instructor. We yeah. looked at it was a matter of opinion because his tactics were a little different than others. You know, we said that, hey, look, if you look in the military, if you look in the law enforcement community, you actually have people who train just the way that he's training, but they're not putting it on social media. Um, I pulled up back in 2015, the Marine Corps, they do a silent drill with their rifles. Hundreds of people come out in the 8th and I, which is Marine Air Corps Barracks in Washington, D.C., and they watch these guys twirl these pretty rifles with their hands on their hands. It's saying that they are muzzle raking each other, and at the end, they mm -hmm. actually point these rifles at one another. There is no disclaimer yeah. saying that the barrels have been flooded with lead, and there is no way possible. Right. Yeah, I think I think there's lots of different things in the in the you know um, in the firearms training community like that. What I'm trying to find out here because what I'm getting from you guys is a lot of this started with Bob Owens. So you know maybe you can fill us you in on that, Lucian. Sure. Yeah, I'm gonna interject. It didn't. It didn't start with Bob Owens. Okay. I'm gonna tell you where it started from. It started from the rat of the firearm game. Samuel Hayes the third. Let me tell you what happened. I'm gonna give it to you straight. Okay. I, you know, you know me. I always focused on doing my own thing initially in the beginning. I always decided I'm gonna stay in my lane. I'm not gonna get in nobody's business. I'm gonna do my thing, focus on water, and that's it. And that's what I did until I get a phone call one day, some guy telling me how to run my business. And I looked at him. I said, "You ain't about to run my business." And I hung up the phone. And I get mm -hmm. a lot of harassing phone calls from this dude, all kind of different things. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not the only person he's done this to. He's done this with my 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 dear brother that you're on the line with, James McCoy. He done it with this this woman named. So who Todd. is who is Samuel Hayes the third? For those of us who don't like, I've never heard of him before. So I, look, look, I never met the guy. I've okay. never been to Atlanta only for this one time to train the urban shop shooters. Okay. About three weeks I'm, I'm searching it. It looks like this is also another black uh, firearms training group owner i'm just saying that to be descriptive so people out there have a little clue of what's going on so is that is that right this is another black or however you want to put it african-american i i don't really use that term african-american no, I, I i'm gonna tell you what can i can i can i use can i use the word i want to use oh. um <laughs> it's up you to you man brother, I, this is this is like freedom right here so if you want to use it <laughs> no, go I'm ahead not, i'm tired with Wait, hold on, because I'm tied with my brother, and whatever I say affects my brother, so that's why I okay. ask him. Mm -hmm. Be Be okay. <laughs> this dude, <laughs> what he does is steal people's work. Okay. He's chase. I'm telling you the truth. Okay, and then he reported over to Bob Owens. This is the game. And it's no telling what him and Bob Owens told the NRA. They could have said I was... Well, because, okay... Uh, Right. I mean, if you look at this article, and I think this is public record, so everyone can go look at this. I'm just going through it really quick because obviously we don't have, you know, it looks like he spoke to another. Were you at some point a, a corrections officer in, in North Carolina? Yeah, and that's not even the original article. Okay. So this is not the original article I'm looking at. No, it is not. Okay. I have the original article printed out at my house. Okay, so you're saying that this article was edited and changed and stuff added to it. Over time, yes, it was. Okay, yeah. So what's okay? So go ahead, just give us the download on this. Let's let's stick to this particular thing. The thing I was telling James is obviously Bob Owens is not here, and I'm going to tell you from like uh, you know my my personal experience with Bob Owens when I came into the you know to the firearms game into the gun world. Uh, Bob has shared stuff. I, I don't think I've ever met him, but he has shared stuff that I've done. And he's like warned me about certain people. That's what happens in the firearms industry. Uh, I think that I'm going to put it this way. I'm going to probably offend a lot of people out there, but I think there's a lot of bitches in the firearms game. You, you got know, them right. It is. God damn it. It is. We're supposed to be men and, and all that kind of stuff. But I think there's there's honestly just a lot of bitches. So people are always complain, like, don't hang out with that guy. Don't do something with that guy. And whenever people tell me that, I always tell them, look, you know, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to judge everyone based on my experience with them. So, you know, that's what I'm going to do. Now, Bob did do that in, in at least one instance with me. And then later on, I found out that that person was messed up. 
So, but that's the way it goes. You know, unfortunately he committed suicide. He's not here. He's not here to speak for himself. And I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just putting it on the record that from my point of view, I don't have any issues with him, but you obviously do. So I want you to be able to get it out of your system of what's going on here. As far as? As far as, cause you know, because this is one of the, you know, this is one of the people you're saying that the Samuel Hayes guy started it off and then Bob, uh, you know, pushed it, but you know, I, I'm trying to figure out if if you're saying that this is a conspiracy of these people against you, or do you think that this is just something that they do in general? Because I, I believe I think, that there's I other people they've, they've done things years. with. I think they've been doing this crap in the gun game for years. I don't even think okay. it's a conspiracy at this point, because we, between me and my brother and a lot of people around this country, we mm -hmm. have been connecting too many dots for it to be a conspiracy. It is what it is. See, the gun game, is a game of you see and don't see you hear mm -hmm. and you don't hear at the expense of the people mm -hmm. and the people the community they need these firearms the most but they, they do a lot of spicy things behind the bells people don't know about okay i mean I, I think that's why you always see me say i don't do politics i stay strictly the gun fighting right no i agree with you listen i, I agree with you and i'm going to say on that point that i think what's happening like in anything else in life when you have uh, something like this that that there's maybe people who are established and all that kind of stuff they they feel they have control over something they're always trying to maintain that control maybe when different people come in or people see or think in a different way there's things that happen but i think ultimately you know what we all do speaks for itself and if you really believe in freedom then people out there have the ability to either choose to deal with you or not deal with you so you know, from my part, what I'm trying to establish, because I, from from what I got, it seems like you know, there's a lot of negative stuff about you out there, right? And and on your part, you're saying, well, this negative stuff is coming from these people and it's pushing people to think like that. So, are you saying that it's you know, it's not that way, or I'm saying you know, it's only Bob Owens? Take, take, okay. the, take the incident, take the instance that we have at the range just this past week. Okay. How do I get banned from that range? What range well, are we talking? What range? Are, what range are we talking about? We're talking about Blackstone Range, which the employees there are very good people. They really are. I promise you that they are. Where Where They're is this people. range? Uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, right? Okay. Now, watch this, my brother. How do you get banned from a range? Well, this is what they did. They had a couple people in Georgia. They had a couple people in Alabama. These are all people who don't live here. Mm -hmm. They never been to this range. They are not members of this range. Hell, for all intents and purposes, we don't even know if these people really even exist. So, so, and so, what, what happened do, here? How did you get like? What's the circumstances of you being banned from this range? I'm, I'm, I'm telling okay. you, what they did was they say, "Hey, you don't like butter. I don't like butter. Okay, those guys over there in Alabama, they don't like butter. I tell you what, let's get some guys over there in Alaska who don't fucking like butter, and let's all call this range and tell them this." Hey, we are members at this range. We feel unsafe with this dude here. I'm going to pull my membership. They're not even members of that range. They don't even live in this state. And so the range was like, oh, well, we don't want to lose any money. No, sir. And so let's just ban him and we can keep the money flowing. How I know this? Because I got the screenshot of these uh, people talking this thing online. Okay, so how did so how did they ban like were you were you a member at this range? Did you ever shoot there? Of course I was a member. Not okay. only was I a member, mm -hmm. I was bringing them people who actually live here. Okay, so under what's like so how did they wind up banning you from this range? Were you told about this because officially? Because they was getting emails, they was getting calls. Yeah, but they how did they notify you that you were banned from the range? I got you know because I actually sat down and talked to one of the big guys there, and he was telling me, he said, Vara, I don't know what kind of haters these people are, but they blowing my phone up all throughout the night. They send me my email. I can't sleep. My wife calling me. You know what I'm saying? And that's what happened. And then we got the, we got the, I got the screenshot. And it says, the range couldn't handle the heat. We got them banned about time. So what's the deal? Okay, I understand that. So basically, there was a coalition of people that put pressure on the range, and you got banned from there, right? Right. It had nothing to okay. do with the shot scraping the uh, the um, what do you call it the the, uh, the scalpel. Is now let me so let me ask you a question. Is this the range? Because there's another video out there where where um, that's you know, the one. 
where you you were like sh like someone says you shot at the ceiling. So do you want? So that's the same range, right? Same range. Okay. So can you tell us what happened in that video? Because who posted this video? You? I did. Okay. And so I'm you posted. Okay. I I post. Let me tell you something. I get so sick and tired of looking at these videos online. Mm -hmm. I see them because you know you can't help but see them. If you're in a gun game, mm -hmm. they're gonna come to your news feed. They're gonna come around, right? Mm -hmm. And they all pristine. They all clean. Half of these people don't even show you what the hell they're shooting at. You know? What I'm saying? Okay. Ain't nobody that clean all the time. If you train with a weapon, right? You train with a weapon, and you train, let's say, reloaded. You're going to fumble a reload somewhere down the line. Okay, so so you basically included your mistakes. I understand that. I yes, do that I all the time. Look at my mistake, though. Yeah. My mistake mm -hmm. was a beautiful mistake. Let me show okay. you how beautiful it was. I initially, on the extraction of the gun, had a hang up with my shirt, right? Because, you know, I had this big shirt on, right? Mm -hmm. But I was able to recover this firearm established proper grip before the first shot went up which means that there was some kind of gun handling manipulation skill there to reinforce an essential fuck up you see what i'm saying That's okay is. okay so so, so let's 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 kind of like paint a picture here because there's people that are watching this and maybe listening and they can't necessarily you know jump over and look at the video this video is, is out there maybe a lot of people have seen it but everyone hasn't seen it um, you posted yeah. this video. How many views does this video have? I, I look. I want to say close to so a just, million. Okay. <laughs> all right. So this video went viral. We can we can count that as viral. Now explain to me. I'm I'm trying to do this for a reason. What's you know, going on in the yeah, video? Yeah. Tell us what happens in the video by Let's just exp yeah. Just tell me what happens without. I mean, obviously, you know, you've got your side, drill. but okay. It's the drill that does not exist, which I, the creator, is creating. Right now, watch. Okay. This. I said to myself, we're going to create a new shooting platform. What should it be? Extreme Close Kinetics, right? We use a knife and a gun for this platform, right? Mm -hmm. I said, okay, I tell you what, we're going to just work some drills and combinations because like a great boxer, every boxer has combinations. Every martial artist has combinations. In fact, MMA fighters have combinations. So why okay. wouldn't I not have a combination, right? So you're so creating, so so let me just stop you there for a second so that we can be clear about that. Um, so in this video, you're creating a, a like a gun slash knife fighting um, combination. Combination. And now is this, time. is this video, is this video the, the, you know, the perfection of that or is this video no, are you showing you developing we're that showing the, yeah, we're showing the trial okay what are we looking to accomplish right what are okay. the steps in what we're looking to do so okay so you're not actually you're not actually teaching this to anyone out there no. right now okay no we have in fact they gave us our own private bed to do it okay so the owners of the range were there at this time I, i'm assuming someone responsible for the range was there when you did this video right hell no they said, hey, listen, we know who you are, you good. Because we, in, in fact, the one with the Arnold Schwarzenegger overdub, we shot that before we shot this one. Okay, so right. what I'm what I'm trying to establish here. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just run this down from what I remember my memory. I, I don't want to pull up the video right now while we're doing this no, you're good, you're this good. broadcast. But from what I remember of seeing this video, you're trying to show like a way that with your left hand. You're you're stabbing at the target, and then you're drawing a gun with your right hand, and also shooting the target. And it looks I'm like gonna walk you through it. It looks like you okay you shot into the ceiling. Okay, go ahead, walk us through it. Okay. The 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 extraction for this platform is primarily op uh, how you say the best way, the optimum way is to extract the knife and the gun at the same time. The first strike from the knife is not a stab; it's actually a swipe. Okay. So you're gonna have a left swipe with a round that's going to the abdomen, right? The next part with the, the next step after that would be your anchor. You can't run an anchor on a, um, on a target like that. I need, a, I need a mannequin, or I need a human more importantly, to run the anchor, no problem. So I go ahead after that and I take that head shot. Everything was done like it was supposed to be done. The only thing is we just should have lowered the target. That's all it is. 
Okay. So uh, now, so you you looked at this video. You I don't know if you, was this video edited or did you just put everything no, no, that happened from one point no, to the other? And I, and I really don't like to edit anything. I really don't. Every video out of the two hundred and something ones, but maybe the exception of a few, mm -hmm. are no edits. Okay. That's me. So so here's what so head. here's what I want to ask you about this, and then I'm going to ask James something. But so this is your video. You looked at the video. You yeah. knew what was here in this video, and you posted it. What did yeah. what did you expect to come out of that video? I mean, did you when you were posting this video in your mind, did you think that there were going to be people who look at this and say, "Hey, this is dangerous," or maybe this is crazy? You know, this guy is trying to like draw a knife time. and a gun at the same time. You know what? what was going through your mind? I get people that say, "Oh, that's crazy for," or oh, "That's poo poo for cocoa puffs," or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. We get it all the time, so it didn't bother me. Okay. What bothered me the most? Because you gotta remember too, I'm a social, I'm a sociologist. So I'm mm -hmm. looking at all of this, not only from a gunfighter's perspective, but I'm looking at it from a sociological perspective. And what I'm seeing from a sociological perspective is a lot of group thing. Okay. So you, when you say you're a sociologist, what do you mean there? Uh, do you have a degree in sociology? Of course. I got a okay. master's. Okay. From where? Federal State University, HBCU, Bronco Pride, Attitude Chair. Okay. Understood. Okay. So... I mean, what I'm trying to get here, and I guess maybe James, you can come in and, and tell me, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking when you posted this, you knew people were going to react to this. You know, I think a lot of people, look, I post videos on YouTube all the time, you know, and so it's like when you, when you, when you play the lottery, when you buy a ticket, there's this little thing like, oh, maybe I might actually win these, you know, $500 million. So when you posted this video, there has to be something in the back of your mind that thinks, you know what, people... People are not going to understand this. People aren't, not everyone out there is going to go, oh, this is awesome. I love this. A lot of people, because being a sociologist, I would think you would understand that the way yes. human beings think, they're going to look at this and go, what the hell is this? And you're, you're, you know, you're throwing fuel on the fire of the people who are trying to come down against what you're trying to do. And, and, and the thing is, they're going to come down anyway. It's, it's mm -hmm. a damned if you do damned if you don't situation if I okay so when you so so you're saying when you did it you you were expecting that you know this was going to go this route yeah it's, it's gonna it's gonna come I'm okay not worried about it. so what did, what did you think uh, hold on one second one second lucy uh, james what did you think did you see this video yeah um just come in closer no, if you can please no, no, knowing his over-the-top personality that uh -huh. really shocks me because he dares to be different you know, a, a gentleman told me once that the first brother who dared to be different when he come on the cross. Okay. And a lot of times when I see what God is doing, he's creating something different than the world. And right. because he thinks differently, because of his thought process, he's going to be viewed really differently, and that's okay. <laughs> well, here, here's what I'm trying to here's what I'm trying to find out, and what I want to ask you, James, okay. um, because people out there are going to say that maybe he posted this video knowing that people were going to react this way to this video and this is kind of like a marketing strategy for what you're doing which there are people out there i mean look i post videos sometimes i put a clickbait title on my video and all that kind of stuff because you because if you post up videos you want people to watch it you know and there's people out there that make youtube videos and they do a lot of crazy dangerous things you know we see that all the time there's several people out there i'm not trying to like necessarily get out there and name names but you know um no, Royal say Roy, well, I, I am. I am gonna. I always say I'm not trying to name names or stuff like that, and then I name names. So if you if you look at Royal Nunsuch, for example, you know he makes a lot of videos. People come down and attack him. I personally don't feel that way. I think he has the right to create guns and put them out there and put his own life at risk, you know, and put that out there. But he can. He he is running the possibility of hurting himself, which he has the right to do. And if other people copy what he's doing, they can hurt themselves. But if you know that's that's on that's their responsibility to realize that this is something dangerous if they hurt themselves but i think that we can we can agree that that's why those things are done you know i've, I've seen uh demolition ranch do some things for example like he was shooting in his home he was shooting rifles in his home at steel you know the other day i saw him shooting a 50 at the ground and it's the same thing you know i'm not knocking him he's a grown-ass man he could do what he wants to do but i think it's like a it's also a strategy i don't think any of those people are posting these things thinking everyone's going to go oh this is awesome it's so wonderful yeah but hey i look at just looking at his track record he's mm -hmm. not doing it for publicity he's doing it for himself and 
himself just as he says. Mm-hmm. He was working outside of the box, outside of the establishment. He's right. doing something different. It's brand new. It's not no, I, I, yeah, right. I totally, I totally understand that, and my so, belief is that he a hundred percent has the right to do that. Right. But what I'm trying to establish here is, is do we, you know, are we going into this as men, as free thinking men, realizing that there are individuals out there in the public, we're posting something in the public, there's individuals there in the public that are gonna see this and say, this is really dangerous. Then they're gonna take whatever they want to out of it or the whole thing and post it up and say, hey, look what this guy is doing is dangerous. Right. I mean, this, this is beyond what happened with Bob Owens where maybe Lucian was training and 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 then Bob Owens wrote an article because he heard about this thing or saw this picture. Um, uh, you know, I mean, I don't even that picture that that Lucian that's out there. And and Lucian, you could chime in on this. That picture that's out there with you, um, or I think it's video actually, where you're pointing a gun at a woman. You know, how did that get out there? We put it out there. Okay, so you put it out there. So the the question that I'm trying to ask you is that do you you know do you realize that there's people out there in the public that are going to take that and look at it and say, hey, this is dangerous. Look at what this guy is doing. Let, uh, can I can I be blunt here? Sure. Yes. Okay. Two things. One is 2017. If you're thinking that a, a once certified or have been certified firearm instructor slash educator is using a live fire uh, ammunition in his gun while he's training, okay, it looks like we it looks like we all that kinetic energy. Okay, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, finish your thought. I'm just being honest with you. If you think I'm using live fire, live ammunition in anything that I'm doing, you're a fucking dumbass. And two. In 2017, I shouldn't have to put a damn disclaimer on nothing. No, I'm absolutely. This so, is the time so, for you to think for yourself now. Right. I mean, you, you know, you drive cars, we, we fly planes, we're on the internet, we jerk off the fucking porn. You know what you're doing. Uh, I need you to use this brain. Right. Well, so to understand and say, listen. See, here, here's what I'm saying, Lucian. I agree with you, but what I'm saying is like free. Like I believe in freedom. Freedom is a double-edged sword, right? So if I believe that you're free to do this, you know, you're free to do it. And at the same time, people are free to criticize it and go, wow, look at that. You know, that's how it is. Listen, I, I, I put things out there I all the time. Right. Okay. So criticism is one thing. Mm-hmm. Some people take it to the level of slander. And see, okay. Just, just come in, just come in closer, James, this, so we can hear this, what you're this saying. This is something that, that I've been addressing since I've been in the firearms community is what we call the double standard. Okay. Let's go back to his last video where he had the knife deal going and he had the pistol going, right? He shoots up and he hits the bathroom. You look up in the ceiling, there's a hundred other holes there when he did it, right? Some people act like it was the end of the world. You can Google online negligent discharge and you'll see an instructor who worked at a range and he's teaching a class. He has a 44 magnum and he shoots the ceiling. Nobody knows his name. Mm-hmm. You know, why does this guy tend to attract all the negative heat? But yet, when I Google negligent discharge or instructors who are shot. So that, I, I think I saw something. that video. You're referring to the video where the guy was showing uh, like a big revolver and something went off there. What? Yeah. So, so I'm not sure what that guy's name is. Uh, I definitely don't know. But I was right. under the understanding that that guy was fired. I, I think, you know, he's a I fucking mean, nobody. No, no, no. It's not that well, he's a nobody. But this is what I'm yeah, saying. Like, I, I, yeah, I don't think I don't think that that's uh, I don't think that's like a fair statement to say he's no one. This right. could have been a perfectly good trainer, a respected person. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't know him. This thing happened to him. Listen, every single person out there makes mistakes, Lucien. Exactly. So the thing, the this thing that I, the thing exactly. I agree, the thing I agree with you with because I do it all the time. People who watch my channel will see this. That like I put out a lot of things, even when I mess up, even when I do stupid things, and then people say, "Oh, look at Hank Strange, he's stupid." Now I go into that knowing that that people could say that, and I, you know, I'm an editor, you know, so I could very easily edit that out and not put it up there. But I do it for the same reason of what you're saying that when none of us are perfect, I don't believe in perfection. I just believe in striving to attain perfection. You know. Yes. 
So, um, but, but the point that I'm, the, the thing I'm trying to get to here and get an answer from you is that, you know, you guys are posting this stuff. You're putting it up there. So you, you have to expect that people are going to use that as ammunition against you. And what I'm saying is, you know, what's the complaint about it? Because this is bring. so no, like, do you think this is bringing good attention or negative attention? Do no, you not want the negative? I, I, I'm not complaining about people using ammunition. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm more concerned with the premise. If you look at people that do things like that to try to hurt people, mm -hmm. that means there's something wrong with them. That means they're mm -hmm. ugly on the inside. They lack confidence in themselves in which they got to put somebody else down in order to make themselves look good. And, and w what's really sad about it is they do it and don't even know why I'm doing it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Right. I understand that. And, mm -hmm. and this is rampant. This is rampant through the gun game. You see instructors all the time tell like a student, oh, I'll never do anything like that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Why? So let me ask you, has this affected your business, right? Because Voda Consulting is your business. Has this affected your business? Have you lost clients over yeah. this? Uh, no, I, no, I ain't never losing no client. You can forget that. That ain't going to happen. Because, so have you gained, have you gained Vada clients? Has a very specific kind of clientele. Voda clientele can think for themselves. Okay. Voda don't attract dumbasses. Okay, <laughs> so who... So can you can you just paint a picture? I mean, obviously you've got lots of you know. I'm sure you have lots of different kind of people, but can you paint a picture of who your clients are in general? I love you. Ask that question. That is absolutely fantastic. I taught <laughs> exclusively when I was in Fayetteville and uh, and uh, Fort Bragg. I taught military. That's right. I was getting sergeant command sergeant majors through the door. I was getting uh, warrant officers through the door. I was getting the E6s, E7s, E8s through the door. I was getting the enlisted through the door, prior service, prior Marine. It didn't make a damn difference. Hell, I even trained a deaf client. Okay. So that's so that's who you're your so is that your is that your clientele is that your client list today? Are you training people mostly in the military? Are you training civilians? I'm just trying to paint a picture of what kind of people you're training. Are you training predominantly black people, or is it a mix? What's what's going on there? It's, it's, it's you know it's a mixture mm -hmm. uh, because there are some people that just simply do not want to be filmed because of the type of things they do in the military, right? Okay. Someone who works undercover for CID face out there okay well the reason why i want to the reason why i want to and i and i don't blame mm -hmm. you know right the reason why i want to ask this question is that you know i i think that there may be a perception and it's the reason why i invited james to come on i think you, you know you've seen this happen uh with urban sharpshooters you know there there's a conception from people out there that this is like a black group, there's only black people, you're not allowing white people into the group. So I just want to give you guys an opportunity to comment on that. So maybe we'll start, James, what, what, what's, what's going on with the group? What's the rules of the group and who's in the group, not in the group, et cetera? You come uh, in, James? Yeah, let me start. Yeah. The yeah. Shooters was a group that was organized by African-Americans to address a need or concern with them, the African-American and okay. It, it was never designed to be a black only group. Um, the doors are open to everybody. Um, we put out a video a few weeks ago, and um, I put a disclaimer out. And I said that we don't discriminate against anybody. If you see someone who comes in and you think black, they're to be considered a brother or sister in arms. If you see a white man who has on an urban shop shooting shirt, is considered our brother in arms because skin color is really irrelevant. Right. So but you're not you're not you're not practicing any exclusivity in with in what you're doing. What 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 I'm gathering is you're trying to promote uh people in black communities, black people getting into guns. Exactly. Right or wrong. Okay. Definitely. So how, how, so, um, you know, you can comment on that as well, Lucian, you know, in regards to the urban sharpshooters, which you're a member oh, okay. of and, and your group well, and, I'm, and your I'm, training. Look, I'm going to say what I'm going to say, because, you know, Bobby mm -hmm. does what it does. Punk ass march to rape. Mm -hmm. I don't exclude mm -hmm. anybody. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody paying me to teach. You know what I'm saying? A, a specific demographic. Mm -hmm. You leave that kind of shit to Mars Touré. And I'm, I'm purposely saying his name. 
So uh, okay, hold on a second. So you're 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 mentioning uh, Mass Ture here now. He's the he is the founder of uh, Black Guns Matter. He ain't the founder of nothing. He stole that name from a bunch of Caucasians who had that shit years ago. Okay, he so he own firearms. He a fucking felon. Fuck that motherfucker. <laughs> okay, I mean and that. What he do? He, and the reason why I'm, I'm gonna tell you why I'm saying right. It. Okay, I'm gonna tell you why I'm saying it because he came in my neighborhood. He came to Chicago. Right. I don't care if you don't pick me. But you get somebody from Chicago to teach Chicago people. You don't call no you don't call no Caucasian person from fucking Detroit to come teach Chicago people how to defend themselves in our city. You take that punk ass shit back to fucking where you fuck you from from um what that is, uh Philadelphia. Okay, don't so hold that. on. Uh, I'm 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 a little confused here. I thought you were in North Carolina. Yeah, I'm in North Carolina, but it's still Chicago in my heart. Oh, okay. So do you try when you go to my city, you pull my people. You don't import nobody that don't live there to come teach my people. That's what it is. Okay. And you can tell him I said it. And he a felon. He can't own no fucking guns. And he backed by the NRA. And they paying him. Okay. Paying. So so your your beef with uh, Mas Torre is because he's a nobody. Maj, I'm sorry, Maj Torre. I don't, I don't really, you know. I think I, I saw him at the last NRA show. Um, you know, I, I'm not super familiar so your thing with Mosh Ture is that he went to Chicago and he didn't um, he didn't bring like a black firearms instructor to teach people it, now it, do you even, do you teach in Chicago yeah I do and it's not even about him bringing a African-American okay uh, unable. what we're looking mm -hmm. for is if you're gonna teach somewhere mm -hmm. he was out in Philadelphia Allen's backyard he the only person he should have invited was Shanine Allen Right. Is, as beautiful as that woman is, she should have been there in that backyard. He spit in her face. And not only did he spit in her face, he stole that woman idea. Okay. And then he go to my city. And I wasn't even going to come out to train. I was going to recommend somebody who was certified by the, state of, by the state of Illinois to teach concealed carry to go conduct that session for him. And he mm -hmm. spit in my face. Who the fuck you think you is? And then he get in trouble, and then I lay an open hand to him. And then two weeks, what, two days ago, he, he dissed me again my fist. Look here, he ain't shit. Okay, so what did he? So what specifically? What what specifically did he say about you? This is what I'm gonna do. I, I can't I can't remember the whole paragraph. So okay. What I'm gonna do? I got the screenshot. I'm gonna put it up on my uh on all my social media. Everybody okay. can look at it. But tell us what it was that offended you that he said to you. Everything I do in the field. Right, I understand that. So tell us what he tell us what he said to you, or what in your mind, you know, you you felt that was the slight. About, you know, oh, I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna judge him at first, but you know, since he made that video, I'm gonna have to judge negatively against him, or whatever the case may be. And this mm -hmm. motherfucker couldn't tell you the difference between the two two three and the five five six. <laughs> okay. So where do you, so, you know, here's the thing I'm trying to understand. Um, you know, uh, first of all, here's what I have to say about, you know, uh, he obviously has an organization that for whatever reason he's the head of and he's running. And, and I think he has the right to like, the oh, okay, so who's, running. who's running that organization in your opinion? Who's running the organization? The NRA oh. is running that. He ain't got nothing. Okay. He ain't got nothing. He get a check. Living in so, some high rise that he can't necessarily afford on his own. Still an actor's money. Okay. He don't run nothing. Okay, so let's, you know, let's take that. I mean, in the end, whoever's running it, let's say it's the NRA running it. Obviously, if it's their organization or his organization, whoever's organization it is, as I said before, you know, I, I, I invite anyone who's mentioned here in this podcast if they want to come on and, and say whatever they have to say. So that includes Mash Torre or anyone else who's mentioned or representatives of those people who are mentioned. We'll, we'll let them come on in the future and say what they have to say about it. But what, I, what I'm trying to say to you here is if they're running an organization, do they have the right to do whatever they want to do? So if they go to Chicago, can they get whoever they want to? To give a class, can they do whatever they want to do? Just like you can do whatever you want to do. Hey, look, I could drive a car with my feet if I want mm. to, but it don't mm. make it a good idea. You know what I'm saying? When yeah, but the people's things, it's about the mm. respect. Okay. When I go to, if I ever go to Baltimore, that's my brother's backyard. I knock on my brother's door to say, "Hey, brother, I'm here. I miss you." 
<laughs> if I go to Philadelphia and I and I know that Shanine backyard, I'm gonna look for Shanine. I know she's very busy, and I'm gonna say, "How's it doing, my beautiful sister? I miss you. Mm. Help you? Can I get you some water? I'm gonna do something like that. What I'm not do is come to your city. Mm -hmm. And that's the form of disrespect to me. Okay, I understand what you're saying. It's called good business. It's called good etiquette. It's called caring about the people who live in that community. I understand, but you know, those are unspoken rules. And what we're talking about is spoken and unspoken rules and whether people can follow them or not follow them, follow them and whether they're free to follow them or not follow them. So I'm not saying that I agree with that. You know, I, I try to be that kind of person that when I go somewhere, if, I, if I'm able to contact those people, if I know them, if I communicate with them, I say, hey, you know, I'm in the neighborhood or whatever. But, you know, that doesn't mean that other people have to do that. They do not necessarily have to do that, you know, so... Let, let, let me speak on something about it. This is very close. This is a good example of his rage when people have sought to destroy his reputation and run him out of the bounds. You know, when we go back and we talk about you know the words that was on created from bearing arms and other publications, the criticism isn't the problem. Mm -hmm. It's the level. An intent to humiliate, embarrass, destroy, and run this man out of bounds community for something that most people would overlook. So, where it started out is probably two concerns of safety. Somebody took a person and it went from zero, now it's at 1,000. You know, I understand his rage because, again, he and I were more personal friends. He's a member of my own club. I've actually ate with him. He's been in my house. We've trained together. We've done things. So I can understand why he would do and say some of the things he would say. Other people looking at him don't understand the beatings that this man has, you know, took, him, or took over the last two years. And now we're at a point again where, okay, he goes to a different city. He's at a different range. He has a following. Um, he went down to Atlanta and did like some training with Tig, the girl that's down there that's training, taking pictures. And you start seeing the hate mail. You start seeing the internet stories. You start hearing the negative comments. You know, it becomes a thing where it's no longer criticism, but it's hate Okay, so here's what I'm trying to establish. I think you can put a lot of things into two categories, the, the deliberate and the accidental. So do you think that this is an accidental thing that's happening, that people are just naturally hating here, or are we dealing with something that's a, more of a deliberate conspiracy? It's a definitely deliberate conspiracy, and I'll tell you why. You know, urban shop shooters, you know, I'm not going to disclose how many members we have, but we have quite a few. And you will find people on different pages all across social media calling mm -hmm. this man a fraud. They'll say he has a fake Jamaican accent. He doesn't know what he's doing. He was never in the military. He was never in the law enforcement community. He lost his certifications. He doesn't have a concealed current permit. He was locked up for shooting someone or arrested for shooting someone in a training class. And they put this information on every internet, on every social media. Page. And you're saying that's all erroneous, false information? False. Okay. False. And the so, reason why I can mm -hmm. tell you this is because when he came here, I asked him to explain himself, and then we went behind just to check and see if he was telling the truth. The right. biggest lie that's being told right now by our good friend, I'm not going to say his name because it's slander, but there's a rumor going around that when he lost his concealed carry, Prevention in North Carolina. I mean, when he lost his uh, credentials in North Carolina to teach mm -hmm. carry, he actually lost his carry permit. So right. So, that, so let's so let's just back. Let me just pause there for a second. So okay. So Lucian did lose his credentials to t to be a firearms trainer in North Carolina. Is that true? What say what no so so what I'm trying to get Lucian before James continues here is is did you lose your credentials to be a firearms instructor in North Carolina, yes or no? To no to teach concealed carry. When okay. It, there's, there's two prerequisites you gotta have in order to teach concealed carry, which we ain't got concealed carry no more because now you can carry without a damn permit. Okay. Um, predicted that already. However, you can go to the NRA 
basic pistol instructor, they'll take that or personal protection outside the home or whatever the case may be. The, the state, uh, the state of uh, North Carolina will accept that. And you should ask yourself this question here. Why would an outside body accept that qualification when you got other organizations like this UCCA that teach the almost fundamentally the same thing, but that's a conversation for another video. Okay. Or you can go to the PPSB, right? And the PPSB is comprised of some of the stupidest motherfuckers I've ever seen in my life. And if you don't believe me, mm -hmm. don't take my word for it. Take their word for it because what they don't know is that I recorded that conversation and it's on my uh, my YouTube channel. All you got to do is punch in Vada Inc., PPSB, and you'll see that they don't even know their own fucking law. Okay. That's so so, so what I'm trying to establish is... Right. So now that's your wow. concealed carry permit. You have a concealed carry permit. What I'm trying to establish is did you did you have a license and did you have a, a, a permit or a license or a certification in North Carolina to be a firearms instructor? Yes, I do. And if you look on and, my, and you, um, you do and it's valid right now. No, it's not valid no more. OK, now, why is it not valid? Because the NRA pulled their certification and when okay. the NRA pulled their certification that affected North Carolina. I see. Okay. So, but the, so now the NRA pulled that on you specifically. Okay. All right. So that's that's what I'm trying to establish here. I'm just you know I'm just trying to get this no, okay. so we can I'm put this on the record. Good people. I love you, yeah. man. You good people. Yeah. Okay. So go ahead, James. You 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 go back there. So you so, uh, continue with what you were saying. So when I see him, you should put that gun down on national TV. That this is going to be careful. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless. When I see young men things out of frustration, I understand because a lot of times it's like brother. It feels like the whole world is in the back. The whole firearms community, anybody that's everybody, is turning mm -hmm. this guy because you have a group of people that go around calling anybody and everybody in the firearms community and say, hey, this person is bothering me. Yeah. If he's walking down the street and he slips on a banana peel, they're going to be like, hey, do you have a negative discharge? You know, right. no so so let's so it, so we establish that you know that you see this as a deliberate conspiracy. Um, who do, who do you think is responsible for this? The top is, what I'm going. Hold on, let, let me say this. Oh, go ahead and talk. See, okay. what we do, we sit back and we map everything out. You know, this didn't start with the African American gun community, quote unquote. In fact, a lot of my friends who are instructors within the African American gun community. They have this sense or this feeling of a double standard, meaning that anything that Bada does would be a negative reflection against them, and they don't want the white people looking down at them like they don't know what they're doing. So mm -hmm. it starts from the very top, and then it cascades down to the guys at the bottom. When we go online and we start seeing like the hate messages and the gangs attacks against Bada, we're looking at men like Jeff Fuller from Life and Dynamics, and who we call the Legion of Doom. And they are the ones that's really causing a lot of the, the, the okay. So so okay. So now you just mentioned someone, Jim Fuller. That's so right. uh, I'm going to ask you to elaborate on that and tell me what you mean here by including Jim Fuller. All right, here we go. Jim Fuller, and what we just explained, you put a statement out that in North Carolina took his carry permits uh, away, that they also took his concealed carry permit. So what mm -hmm. Bada did, he went back and he put Jim's statement and then he put a picture of his carry permit and said, sir, I think you're mistaken. You must be talking about James Abel. Mm -hmm. And his statements like that of slander saying, okay, he doesn't even supposed to have a carry. I mean, he doesn't supposed to have a, a, a pistol or a firearm to carry out in public, which is mm -hmm. absolutely a lie. And then he proves that it's a lie. And I guess mm -hmm. the guy takes it personal. And now he wants to create a pool between Bada somebody out in the okay so let me so let's go let's i mean let's stick on this thing here with jim fuller i want to find out okay. about this directly from lucian now this is another person who i know i've done videos with jim fuller i've been out there and and posted stuff with him you know um and and this is once again is the thing that happens in the gun community that people don't realize that a lot of us not really are getting along with each other and there's all kinds of different things going on now i know that um the you know, you're saying Jim Fuller is doing something against you. There's people who do things against Jim Fuller. There's a lot of that stuff I'll going on. So, so tell I'll me from your right. mouth, from your mouth, I want to know what the issue is with Jim Fuller. And, 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 you know what? Well, here's the funny thing. 
didn't even know who the hell he was until what a couple of weeks ago. Oh no, it was like no a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. Because I, like I said, I stay in my lane. I don't worry about what the next person is doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've caught Jim Fuller being the instigator of a lot of things. Yeah, but right. but what I'm trying to find out from you is how how did that how did that come about? Like, how did Jim Fuller come into this story? Is what I'm trying to find out. Well, how the hell he came into this story? Uh, but the only thing I can figure, well, he can answer that. I, I can tell you. Let, let, let me answer that, Robert, because again, I think on oh, my forward observation post, as people say, I'm standing way above watching everything take place. Mm -hmm. Robert made he, he had a valid question, and it goes back to Bob Owens. If Bob wrote an article that he's the worst firearms instructor in the world, and we're not knocking it there, but if Bob committed suicide because he had mental health issues, how credible is Bob Owens' words against Bob? And Bob actually writes a column. So who said? So who who mentioned the fact that like who's or who? No, it's not a fact, but who mentioned that Bob committed suicide because he had uh, mental health issues? It was, it was anybody who commits suicide. Hold on, no, no, no. Oh, calm down. Mm -hmm. let's, let's separate the facts from the emotions. Right. Number one, it came out in the media that he had mental health issues. Okay, then, so let's so oh, oh, hold on a second. So let's let's focus on that. It came out in what okay. media? In the general media that's out there that's okay. anti-gun? No, no, or, no, no, no. Or so in, in the thing. in the firearms uh, media. It, it came out in the firearms media first, and then it was confirmed mm -hmm. by Jim Fuller because when Bada wrote his article asking, should this man who wrote these horrible things about him words be taken credible, Jim came back with an article. How dare you talk about a good man? Okay. Blase, 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 right. blase, blase. Hold on. And then Jim said out of his own mouth that this man had mental health conditions, issues that he fought for a long okay. time. Okay, right. Okay, so let's just let's just pause there so that we can, you know, I, I just want to compartmentalize these things okay. because we're 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 all making statements here. So this this is my understanding. You know, mm -hmm. Bob Owens uh, was someone who was out there that was that was um, obviously had a message about Vada Consulting. Mm -hmm. You know, when he committed suicide, we know that that's a fact. He committed suicide. You're saying Lucian uh, wrote an article where he said that you know how can someone who's attacking me who had a mental problem because they committed suicide say this? And then you're saying that that Jim, you know who was probably a friend of Bob Owens, exactly. you know, in my personal opinion, I, I would get that, you know, that someone who's a friend of this person would jump up there and defend someone that was their friend and say, hey, wait a second, you know, don't, don't attack this guy. You know, I don't think that necessarily means that, you know, Jim Fuller decided to also jump into this and come out against Lucy and maybe he you know just like if like you're here and, and you're part of you're, you're part of this um, situation that's going on and you're defending Lucy and because you're his friend so but it's, see, pos it's possible stuff. that Jim Fuller was looking at it that same way I'll, I'll defend certain things like there are things in this interview that he, mm -hmm. that, that he already know he's going to get chastised about because mm -hmm. number one we're not going to insult other people especially mm -hmm. when it's going to be broadcasting nationally. So, right. you know, that's no, why. But see, so here's what I'm trying to establish, because, I mean, you know, we've brought Jim Fuller into it. He's not here. I'm doing this. I've said it already. I don't know if there's people that are jumping on. I'm deliberately doing this with you guys so that at the end of this, like, you have a, a really good opportunity to get your story out there. And I think even when we were setting up this interview, I promised you guys, and I'm going to reiterate it now, I promised you guys that after this goes up, we all of us know that right now there's a lot of people watching this. Uh, Lola's oh, yeah. looking at it. There's a lot of people watching this. There's a lot of people commenting. I'm sure people are waiting for me to, to bring in their comments and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of people watching this. They're going to have a lot of opinions. So I've promised you guys that after this, I'm going to allow you to come back again. Either you can come in here personally to the studios and sit down with me and talk about this. I'm not trying to do something like one time where I'm trying to like uh, feed off of this negativity that's happening with you guys and create something. I'm really trying to get this out there and, and have this situation handled. Now, the, the thing is, is that we're bringing in Jim Fuller now. And, and what mm -hmm. I want to establish is why does Jim Fuller come into this story? 
And is it maybe because he's trying to defend his friend who brother, has committed suicide? I, I think that's part. I think that's part of it. But then, before, okay, Mr. Mr. Hold on, I'm, hold on, hold on, hold on one second. Bobby, in let me all say this. fairness, mm -hmm. go ahead. Uh, there was a point when Bada created a page, Bada Logic One, and the Legion of Doom. So they called themselves the Legion. Figured out a way to hijack his page where he got. Who who is the Legion? Page. Okay, so you've mentioned this before. Is the Legion of Doom a name that you're putting on this, they, or a they, name they, that these guys have? They call themselves the Legion, and I call them the Legion of Doom. Okay, they, so, so who is so who is the Legion that we're speaking okay, of? Okay, now what we can do, we can go back later and post all these people because the only one that I recognized was Jim Fuller. But you yeah. had a group of firearms instructors mm -hmm. all across the country guys that are even in the military, they hijacked this man's page. Somehow they were able to get Facebook to kick him off. They took control over the page and made all kind of racist, all kind of very insensitive statements. A so, okay, so what kind of, what, I, I mean, you know, I'd like to know, I'd like you guys to put it on the record, what kind of racist, insensitive statements were made by this legion that you're speaking of? Because I've never heard of them. I'm okay. not involved in it. I don't know anything about this. So I just, the, I, the, you know. The official name that they gave themselves was the legion. They hijacked and took took over by his page. Are you saying they hacked his page and they were posting on his page as him? No, no, no. What happened, somehow they got him booted off of his page. Okay. And he was the only admin. And, right. they were, and they were left there to wreak havoc. It was a page mixed with black and white. Okay. But they chose to show their behinds and show their true colors and call people cool. They used the N word. And I'm not saying that Jim Fuller said this, but I know okay. Jim Fuller was on that page. Okay. So, so let's, I mean, I mean let's, let's, before, let's make sure. This yes, happened so way before Bob passed away. Right. So let's make sure. So let's make sure that we're being like very clear about this particular situation because I mean we're broadcasting live we're not exactly. telling people that you have any kind of evidence of Jim Fuller saying anything racist exactly. right I didn't say okay. Jim said that I said right I mean because that's not you, you, that's, want evidence? you want evidence I got evidence. of Jim are you saying you have specific evidence of Jim Fuller yeah. saying something racist okay so what is it he necessarily said something racist but I can guarantee you that one of his friends said something. Well, like okay, so, so that's, and, but, and but that's what, what, okay, but that's what I'm trying to, that's what I'm trying to so establish. Mm -hmm. It was so racist, in fact, I had to go to the FBI. Okay, so hold on. I just, I, I, this is something that I need to focus on. So let's make sure, let's make sure here, okay? I, 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 I'm here with you guys, and I agree that there's people who are racist in the gun community and any community. It's something that exists. And it, it probably will be never that we eliminate this, but I want to make sure that we're clear here that Jim Fuller never put his name to anything that was said racist or, or has any kind of, you know, inclination you know, towards you know being he racist not, to you guys. I'm going to go out and I'm going to say he didn't say anything racist, but okay. what I am going to say is his friend did, and if you don't believe me. Okay, so who is his? Who, so which friend? So, okay, but which friend are we talking about? I'd like to know specifically who, which friend this is. Uh, I'm not saying that you guys have that right here, but here, here's the reason why. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let me just let me just interject something here for a second. I mean, you know, here's the thing. I, I want to be really careful with this. Uh, you know, I want to bring out the truth. I want to talk to people about the truth. I definitely believe in that, but I want to make sure that in the process of doing that. We don't, you know, put things on people Say that should not wrong. be there. Right. That's so, right. and, 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 one, and one of the things, one of the things I can tell you specifically about Jim Fuller, in my experience, my dealing with him, it's, it's limited. I haven't known him for a long time, probably about two years. I don't think that he's a racist person. And the last time that I, when I, when I was in Vegas for SHOT Show, I actually went to an event that he had in which he was doing a fundraiser for, if you, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but in Africa, there's people who abuse children in Africa, not just like abuse them, but they capture these children, they kidnap them, they use their body parts, they sacrifice them and all that kind of stuff, African children. And Jim Fuller is involved in an organization where they, they get money and, and help people go there and capture these guys and bring these guys to justice. So I personally, before 
I'm I don't know. I don't. In... I didn't say that Jim Fuller was racist. Okay. All right. I just. I just want to make sure that we're clear with that. Now, who's the friend that you're saying what, that did this? What are you saying? Hey, he's he's saying hold on. Hold on, about it. Let me say this better. No. Let go. go let 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 Lucian speak for himself here. Go ahead, Lucian. To VODA logic, vodalogic.com, the first article that's there is going to have those um, conversations that uh, the guy introduced himself to me as the grand, whatever the world it is on the Ku Klux Klan. That's what put him on the FBI radar. Okay. It's right there. I, I, like, I, didn't, I didn't tell these people to write this stuff. They write this stuff to me. And I just say, okay, no problem, boss. You know, take that screenshot, put it back into my, my data, which I compiled. And when I'm ready to unleash it to the world like I did today, which is why my... Okay, so when I... So, when, so okay, so we're... Oh, go ahead. So we're pointing people to Vada Logic. So when I go there, the first article I see on the top left is an article. It's got a picture of Jim Fuller, and it's showing that... Um, it looks like uh, you know Fuller invited you to do some kind of force on force thing, and then you didn't do it. Is that the article we're talking about? Is that is that the article? I just want to make sure that we're looking at the same article here. It's it's titled "Evaluation: Jim Fuller, Ethnocentrism, and His Lack of Cultural Relativity." Is that what we're discussing? That is absolutely right. And if you just scroll on down. Okay. Because, see, the thing is with people that I've noticed, and you, you probably already know this already, people see what they want to see, they hear what they want to hear, and they read what they want to read. And I don't tell these people to write these kind of crazy comments. Okay, so here's, so here's the I comment that you're, so here's the comment you're refer so here's the comment you're referring to. Um, it says, just wanted you to know as the grand clockard of the Alabama KKK, I can tell your gun uh, jujitsu skills are very weak. Is that is that what you're talking about? Is that the comment that you're referring to? Yeah, that's that guy. That's the guy. Okay, so um, so this looks like is this the Robert Segrist Jr.? I don't write this crap. Well, okay, so it looks like this person has a badge that says security officer. Is that the person that we're talking about? This Robert Segrist Jr. Yeah, is that who you're referring? Okay, that's so now, so what I'm trying to, so what I'm trying to establish from you, obviously, I see Jim Fuller commented here, but where is the link of this being one of the friends of Jim Fuller? That's what I'm trying to find out, because this that's, is on this is on your blog, and Jim Fuller right. commented and on I'm your blog. Saying, and and, and, and mm -hmm. let, let's not misunderstand anything. I'm not saying that Mr. Jim Fuller is a racist. No, I'm not saying that mm -hmm. at all. Okay. No, 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 no. But what I am saying is company that you keep. Yeah, but so what I'm trying to establish is that like this person, me. this, this, well, here's what I'm trying to establish, Lucien. So Jim Fuller commented because this is a blog and it's public. So when you post something, people can go there and comment. And Jim Fuller commented, there's a picture of Jim. He's putting his name and everything fully behind this, unless this is someone posing as Jim Fuller. We don't know this, but but his, his, the name there says Jim Fuller. It looks like a picture of Jim Fuller, and Jim Fuller commented, and there's nothing I can see here where um, he, you know, he said anything racist. I think he says uh, he agreed to, like, he's talking about him saying that you and him should do this force on force thing, and he said he, referring to you, agreed to do it. We set it up, and then he pushed out I don't find anything wrong with that. That's like man talk. He doesn't say anything racist there. No, then, he does not. Right. Then another person comments, but I don't see where the link is here that this person is a friend of Jim Fuller. That's what I'm trying to find out from you. Hey, friends. I'm okay. not saying that they're friends, but all I'm saying is you watch the company that you keep. Yeah, but but what I'm trying to say to you That's is that this is, a public, this is a public post that you made, and anyone could get on here and say anything that they want to. So we can't immediately attribute this. And, and, and I'm not trying to, like, negate what you're saying. But if we look at this, if we look at the reality of this, we can't link that statement that that person made. Obviously, that person is trying to intimidate you you know, by saying they're from the KKK or whatever it is out there. And I get that. And if you followed up with the FBI or whatever, you're, that's like totally within your rights to do. 
but we can't link that person to Jim Fuller. Now, what I was discussing with James is that James said that there's a group and I'm not trying called, to right, okay, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm not trying to say, like I say, I'm not saying that Mr. Jim Fuller is a racist of any kind. Mm -hmm. All I'm simply looking at is the company that he keeps. And if you keep that kind of company or those kind of people on your feed, that. But but let's. I'm gonna bring this back. Is this Jim Fuller's feed or your feed? Because this looks like oh, that's this. Jim. In, in fact, in but, fact. But but this. But where I'm seeing this here, it says Voda. I see your rose up there. I see the Gunfighters Think Tank. You know, it's Voda Logic. So this is your. This is your posting. That's open to anyone. Yeah, that, yeah, I did a post. I did a post, and that's their comments. Yeah. So, any, but the but the point I'm making, I think that you have to realize. Yeah, anyone could come in there and respond, right? Do. Yeah, but what I'm saying to you is anyone could respond. We don't have any proof or any evidence that Jim Fuller has anything to do with this person respond. The reason why I'm telling you that, I'm going to say it again. I have not, I've known Jim Fuller for two years. I'm not like, you know, I, I'm not going to put myself in the category of being the best friend of Jim Fuller. I've interviewed him twice. I know him uh, through through people that I know. And there's nothing that he's ever done that would that would indicate to me that this comment that this guy made that he would agree with it you know i know jim fuller to be a guy that speaks his mind just like you you know he speaks his mind and and i don't think that he i don't see him i, I don't even see here i mean we can look down i don't see jim fuller um you know like i see the person said something then jim fuller responded no 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 what i'm saying to you is we're looking at this anyone could go look at this Jim Fuller said something, this guy responded, Jim Fuller responded to the guy. Then after that, after that, this guy made this statement. So we're not, I'm not, um, you know, I'm not 100% sure. I'm not saying that he's innocent or guilty, but I'm not 100% sure that he agreed with this statement that this guy made. But what, I, what I'm saying is not the fact that he's a racist person, but what I am saying is that he is very insensitive people that are different so where so why and why I'm would you like, say that I'm not out of this world different I just train right. a little bit different yeah but what I'm trying to find out from you is you know why would you say that Jim Fuller doesn't tolerate anyone that's different I, you know I'm, I'm open to hear you know what the evidence is of that I mean I think from my point of view I'm different I mean I'm, I'm radical to a lot of people and what I do and he was open to me coming there and doing stuff with him that doesn't mean anything you know people could do that what I'm saying is like w where did you see that there's this thing of him you know is it strictly because he has something negative to say about the way that you train versus uh, I'm not sure if Jim Fuller actually trains people I think he probably does There's some kind of training going on there but uh, from my assumption, Jim Fuller is a guy that builds AKs. I don't really know that he does training. I'm aware that there's people who come out and do training um, on his behalf, but I'm not aware that he does training as a firearms instructor. It could that I mean that well could be the case. Neither. That's none of my okay. business. Right. I don't know what his business is, but all I know is that it's none of my business. Right. But you're saying that because because be because doing. he's attacking you, that's your evidence that he doesn't tolerate things that are different or training methods that are different. Is that right? Am I correct in that? All it is. And I, okay. You know, and I, you know, I would I would rather march him just give me a call, but not now, not now, not after those right those uh, private block calls and all of that. You know, calling me out of my name on my phone. Now, don't call mm -hmm. me now. To all of this stuff. Okay. okay. Yeah, okay. go, hey, go ahead, think, James. Go, go ahead and interject here. Yeah. Again, let's try to separate the facts from the emotions. And I know we're mm -hmm. father because okay. it's him directly sometimes. Mm -hmm. He'll come off a little bit of rough. But right. the point he's trying to make, and I said, but by the way, I like the fact that he's speaking his mind. I yeah, he's speaking you know, his mind, and he's, people he's can take that. that. Yeah, yeah, people could take that however they now, want to. Now, let but me it's a good it thing. Let me clean mm -hmm. it up a little bit. Where okay. I see fault and say Jim, because he's mm -hmm. a a well recognized name within the firearms industry. Again, it's one thing to criticize, but then when the slander begins. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't see Jim stepping in saying, okay, boys, enough is enough. Mm -hmm. You know, 
you could go on that bottom page and you can look on the um let me see memory service mm -hmm. go back to Bob Owens. When Vada made this post about his friend, mm -hmm. you can really see how Jim escalated things and took it very personal. Right. And, you, and do you think that that's do you think that that's understandable? If, understandable. if a friend if a friend of yours killed himself and he's no longer in the world, and then you know, I mean, look, I I understand how I understand really how Lucian sees this, right? You know, Bob Owens came down on him. I mean, that's like undeniable. We can all look at the article. Bob came down on him, right? Bob's been known to do that. He hasn't only done that to Lucian. He's done that to a lot of people, right? And and um, you know, and if if we're saying that this like if we're linking this to being a racist thing, I, I could tell you that Bob has come down on white people. No, so, we're not, we're not so that, saying that Bob was racist. We're just right. saying that hey, Bob, in our opinion, was the guy who helped lead the witch hunt, and Bob killed himself because Bob had mental illness. And because right. Lucian or Bada asked the question, if he's so unstable in the mind and he took his own life, who's really unsafe? It was a question. Right. No, no, no. I it understand that. Slander, but, but well, you know, I think that you know, I think that in the light of like, look, if someone attacks you, if someone comes down on you, I have my detractors. I have people who come down on me. Okay, so if someone comes down on me. They've been out there for a long time coming down on me. I think that you know, suicide is a thing that is you know, it's always been around. It will always be around, and people do it for lots of different reasons. We could put it in the category of a mental illness. You know, I, I I don't know that I necessarily agree with that. But for whatever reason, if a person who came down on you is no longer with the living, whether they killed themselves or someone mm -hmm. killed them, and then and they're not in the world. If, if we then turn around and go, ha, see that guy killed himself. And, you know, so that's, 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 the, that's the, my reason. Yeah, because but that's my reason. Well, but that's, but the thing about it is, uh, you know, um, we can have Lucian tell us what he meant by that. But mm -hmm. I think we have to accept that it's possible that there's some people out there that took it that way, right? Uh, and that's why they, they, they had it. That's where we can look at Bob and out of his own words. Like, mm -hmm. we played back. Bob's own words and how he described himself before he killed himself. So okay, so what I, were what were his words? He says, "In the end, they, I was a coward, and I was weak, and a coward, and a selfish son of a bitch." Pardon my English. Yeah. So, so now you feel, that's what he said. Okay. Okay. So yes. Okay. So we've all seen that now. We right. can interpret that however we want to. We can interpret that as mental illness. We can interpret that as as someone who's under a lot of pressure and perhaps being honest with themselves. You know, I mean, that could be an extreme moment of honesty there that maybe brought him to, to this conclusion where he did this thing. You know, I think like what I'm trying to establish from Lucian, maybe Lucian can comment on this since he's back. What did you mean when you wrote this article saying that, you know, talking about Bob Owens? What was your intention with that article? I'm glad you asked, my good friend. I'm going to tell you why. Yes. Because a way months ago, I wrote an article, because I'm really big on cognition. I wrote an article talking about mental health, background checks, and the gun game. And how okay. bad we need mental health checks for people who own these firearms. Because what I'm seeing is a lot of issues. So, so you're saying you support mental health checks? Shit, yeah. Okay. You got to have one for North Carolina when you get your concealed carry license. Mm -hmm. uh, well, okay. Uh, you know, but here's the thing. I understand where you're coming from. Personally, I don't agree with that, okay? This whole mental health game okay. is a system that could be set up to be used against anyone. You know, people can come in there and look at you and take, you know, like anything that you do, anything that you put out there, including this interview, and say, hey, look at this guy. We should take away guns from him because he has mental health problems. That's happened to people. I remember seeing someone that was in the Preppers, one of those. You ever saw that documentary on TV, Preppers? And yeah. there was a gentleman that was on preppers and and preppers, you know, the way that they do these videos and they set it up and they write it and edit it. They made him look like he was crazy it because he bad. had because he had guns and then they took his guns away from him. So I don't necessarily agree with that at all. But I, well, I feel again, you're entitled to that story about that either. OK, so I can't speak. Right. We, we don't get we don't so get the I full do story on anything. But go ahead. You were telling me that you wrote this article. Go ahead. Go back to the article. 
Okay, yeah, we lost him again. That's going to happen from time to time, as you can see. Well, well here's the narrative. That, here, here, okay. Here's the narrative from Urban Shots. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, we'll do a lot of speaking for Bonner because he gets too emotional. He say things that he probably should. Well, and the, and the point that I'm trying to bring up by that is that, you know, I mean, there's people who can look at that and say this guy has mental health issues and maybe shouldn't own a gun. And I don't agree with that. And I don't well, agree with, I don't, with I don't us, with us like I don't think we should I don't think we should give that kind of, uh, of a device to the people who want to take guns from us in order for them to take it away from us. Because, you know, these are things like when people do bad things and go out there and are very destructive. You know, the, the mental health system is not always set up think, think about to, to recognize that. Put, put yourself in this position that you're a college student, mm -hmm. you love your Second Amendment rights, mm -hmm. you found a passion to where you want to teach your people. And mm -hmm. because of what you're teaching, people look at you like you're Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, right? Right. And mm -hmm. out of personal vendetta, people had your credentials snatched away, and this is how you fed yourself. You're going to take that personally. That's going right. to hurt so, you. You're going to feel like the so, world is coming down on you. Exactly. So when you hear him speaking and when we're telling his story, people have to understand he wasn't just an NRA basic pistol. He had rifle. He had self-defense. He, he had more rivers than I know the NRA offered. And he had his North Carolina concealed carry. When um, he came here, he trained with Shanine Allen. This man had a stack of folders like this. He let me see different people of all different races, military, law enforcement, mm -hmm. um, you name it, that he had trained in order for them to get their North Carolina concealed carry permits. He's a member of firearms community or the Second right. Amendment community. He's doing everything. That no, I, I, I agree with that. I, and he's attacked. Right, that's I where agree his with that. Comes from. Yeah, I think I totally understand that. I mean, that's the reason why I'm giving you guys this forum to. Because I think that, you know, this is an opportunity for people out there to get to know you and, and, and you know, how your group is involved in this. And obviously you guys are friends. And then also to get to know Lucian and see where he's coming from. And I think it's valid for him to be passionate. I think lots of people out there who are creative and teachers, you know, are passionate people. And, and, and a lot of things that when you're passionate, a lot of things that you do or say, people take it and they twist it and they come down on you. And right. I fully understand that. What I'm trying to establish here is if, you know, we're, if you guys are making the case that this is a deliberate thing, that right. there's, there's a, not the whole, you're not saying it's the whole firearms community. You're saying there's a section of the firearms community that deliberately decided to, to, to set Lucian up and go against him and uh, bring him down, right? That's, That's what right. you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Now, are you are you saying that that is like the reason why they're doing that? Is is it is it because of race? Is it because of something else? Is it a combination? I'm trying to establish it's, it's, that. It's definitely a combination. We never made this a racial issue until mm -hmm. people started acting racist. Okay, you know, but you know, I mean, I think we live in a world. Look, you know, you know, I've got a lot of videos. I've got like. 600 videos are on YouTube. And if you go through those videos, you're going to find people saying racist stuff on those videos, probably every single one, right? And there's people out there that troll. You know, we know for a fact that there's groups like uh, Bloomberg is funding people to troll the gun community. And, and what some of those people do, especially with black people, I'm going to tell you this. I'm not saying there's no racism. There is racism. Racism exists in society. But what I'm saying is that there are those people in those groups that are trying to discourage us from getting out here and speaking our message and saying that we're gun guys and we're pro Second Amendment. You're you're for the Second Amendment, right? You're you're pro Second Amendment. OK, yes, so there's people who are trying to discourage us from doing that. And one of the methods I mean, this is like, you know, this is the kind of stuff that this is the psych games that people play. I think there's people out there who deliberately go and say racist stuff so that we think, man, all these people in the gun community are racist. I don't want to do this. Now, will you accept that or would you would you are you saying that that's not true? That's not true. Exactly. In fact, Jim no, you Shore, think, no, no. Are you accepting that there are what I'm saying is that I think there's people trolling that are deliberately oh. trying to represent themselves as racist or in the Ku Klux Klan and et cetera and make themselves look like they're gun guys. I'm not saying that there are gun guys that are racist. I haven't found that to be the majority of the case. I haven't found it to be any worse than it is in society. But I'm saying to you that there are trolls 
There are people who are paid by groups like Bloomberg to go in there and discourage gun guys. So when they come across black gun guys, they say racist shit. It happens to me all the time. And I came to a conclusion that what these people are trying to do is make me think like, I'm not accepted into this community. But the truth of the matter is when I go to SHOT Show, when I go to NRA, I see a lot of these people. I have black people who support me and, and I think that's awesome. I mean, I really, you know, I, I revel in that. But at the same time, I, you know, just like as a representation of America and the populations, there's a lot of white people there and they support me and they come from all across the spectrum and I don't see that. So yes, I'm sure there's some racists that are in the gun that are in the gun community and that's genuine but i think a lot of what you're seeing is trolling and people who are trying to discourage you what do you think I, about that I, I agree 100 percent earlier and, and i'll say something to jim Ford, um on his behalf we never called him racism i think what we were trying to get across was a lot of the statements that we consider being racist that he is seeing because he's a part of he says nothing against them. Okay, so you're saying that when he sees those things, he should say something about it. Exactly. Yes. Okay. okay. Exactly, because that's how we would do it. You know, right. we're not okay. going to label an entire group of people racist because of a handful of racist statements that are being made. Right. And nor do we want to deflect or try to right. take attention away by creating. Oh, yeah. I, I want to make sure. Guy. I want to make sure because you know when we come across someone who's genuinely a racist and genuinely try to block people because of race or religion or mm -hmm. sexual orientation. The gun world, the second amendment is for everyone. This exactly. is my personal feeling. This is the feeling of a lot of people in the gun community. I wanna make sure that people know it's for everyone. And if we do genuinely, it's my intention that if we genuinely come across someone who we can prove within a shadow of a doubt that this is what they are, I'm telling you right now, not just to you, but anyone else out there that's listening to me, I'm going to come down on those people. I'm going to do every I'm going to turn every single resource that I have against that person. But we need to prove this. This needs to be real and 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 we need to make sure that we do it the right way. So, I see Lucian is back here and Lucian, what I was saying to James is I think there's trolls out there that go on our stuff as black guys. There's this there's, there's people who are being paid, I think by lots of groups like Bloomberg, etc., you know, and they troll us and they try to discourage us. They do it to all gun they guys. Do. But I think as a strategy, they do it. I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I said as a no, strategy, you know they do it against black gun guys where they come in and they say a lot of racist stuff. What do you think about that? No, it's absolutely true because I bust them all the time, not only on my site. Um, my brother, he busts them all the time on his site. Uh, and, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. It's sad. You're like, I don't even believe in race. You know what I'm saying? You know, I just believe in ethnicity, wherever you come from, whatever. Mm-hmm. A lot of people do, and I live in this world, so I got to kind of like, you know, uh, you know what I'm saying? All right. So when I see people that's doing things like that, I got to say without a shadow of a doubt, there's a lot of Caucasian people out here that don't want to see African-Americans, Latinos, LGBTQ, Asian-Americans have firearms. I'm sorry. That's just what the fuck it is. Well, okay. So, so, you know, I mean, uh, you know, there may be a lot, but it's not, I don't think it's the majority. Do you think it's the majority? No, no, no. Okay. No, there's no, just, there's just people who exist like that. Now, let me ask you this. Let me flip, let me flip the tables on you. Do you think that, you know, do you think that there are black people who are racist against white people? Definitely. Yeah, I mean, anybody can be uh, a racist. No, we're we, we going to tell the truth. Yeah. It, America is a very divided and divisive place. The right. firearms community is a reflection of America. If Absolutely. you go to any gun show, you're going to find a very conservative nature, Caucasian. He might be in the um, activities of recruiting for hate groups, Ku Klux Klan. You know, this is what that community attracts. That's not saying that all people are that way, but that's just saying that that exists. You'll have the neo Nazis, yeah, I think, the alt-right, the Ku Klux Klan. It's absolutely. You, you've Everybody got, knows it. Right. You've got people like that, you know, at, at, at the same time. Look, the world is changing, you know. Um, one of the things that, you know, I'm not like a super religious guy, but one of the things out of the Bible that I, you know, that's a mantra is that the old order shall place giving, shall pass giving place to the new, lest one good custom should corrupt the world. The world is changing. This is a truth and a reality. And all of those guys, they're dying out every day. They're dying out every day. I'm not saying there's not new people coming into that, but it's dying out every day. At the same time, there there's some people, even in our community as black people, 
you know, there's some of us who are doing things for the wrong reason. And I've seen in, I'm not saying your group, what I'm interested, I'm going to ask you questions specifically about your group, but I've seen other groups that are black uh, pro firearms groups that people are going into and they're going into those groups because they're like afraid of white people or they think, oh, these white people, you know, Trump became president and then these white people out there want to kill me and do something bad to me. So I'm going to get into guns. Now, what do you guys think about that? I think you can, well, go ahead. Let me say this about it. A couple of months ago, we saw in our home range in Maryland a newscast come out to spread a rumor that African Americans were buying firearms because Trump was elected. We were afraid or, or, or were angry. And I took her into what's called the gun ball and I said, hey, look around. You see a whole bunch of guns on the wall here. Some of them have, you know, a little bit of. Customer. Ask Tony, ask Mike, or ask Jack, how are the gun sales? And they'll say they're lousy. So you have this propaganda trying to make it seem like it's right. But all of a sudden, going out buying guns just because of Donald Trump, which isn't true. And I think it's being used to try to scare white people into thinking, oh my God, all these black guys doing guns, buying guns, we have to let out and buy guns, which is going to regenerate the firearms industry. Right. So now, really is that is that something so okay so is that something that within your group that you're dealing with do you have people in the group that are joining the group because they're worried about that and if so how do you guys deal with it and if you don't how, how you know what's your policy within the group about that not necessarily so because we've been recruiting people for a number of years and we don't want people to scare or angry we want people okay. who actually want to learn about firearms because it's more than self-defense. They might want to go into recreation, they might want to go into hunting, they might want to go into building, they might want to go into education, they might even want to open their own gun store. So right. with us, the firearm conversation is a definite story. Okay, so now here's another question I want to ask you. I want to find out what Lucian thinks about this. But another thing I want to say to you, like I'm, I'm in this group that you have, and, and, and you know, you might have to clear this up for me, but I'm under the understanding that I saw in there recently that someone posted, I don't know if it was you or someone else or Lucian, that if there are black people in your group that voted for Trump, you guys were kicking them out of the group. Is that so? Let me speak on that because I came up with that executive order. When okay. we're speaking of- so, story, so that's true. So that's a truth. No, it is, but hold on, there's more okay. to this. Okay. The, the order came out if you have an African American man or woman that voted for Donald Trump and agrees with the direction that his administration is going, mm -hmm. in, we will delete you from our main page and put you on the community page because you're not like him. Okay, I don't, I don't. So, okay, I'm not. I'm not sure that I'm. I'm getting that. We're gonna probably have to go back here and cover that. Now, when I saw that, I was like, okay, I was waiting for someone to delete me from the group because I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but I definitely voted for Donald Trump. You know, and, and I don't have any issues about it. Anyone that looks at my channel is probably aware of that. So I'm wondering how come I didn't get kicked out well, or kicked it, down to this lower well, group look, you're talking look at, about. Look at this. Also, I didn't know, and I said, also, you can mm -hmm. remove yourself. And the reason okay. why we said this is because we were having so many arguments. Over oh, politics. people were starting fights. That's what you're saying. Oh yeah. Okay. And the politics so, were so, over. Let me case in point. Okay. When one of Trump's secretaries of education would go out to a quote unquote historical black black college, mm -hmm. and that student body would boo that person or reject that person, we would have people on the page would say, "Well, I don't understand." And I'm like, well, he just took a hundred million dollars from the black schools. You can't see why they would be mad. It would yeah. become a conflict of interest in how. Okay, so let's so let's so let's cover this. What is your policy about this? Are you saying that your policy is that if there are black people who are in the group who supported Trump or who continue to support Trump who voted for him that you don't want them in the group? Or are you saying that because there were all these fights going on, you decided to like separate people because uh, it was getting uh, a little crazy? Because, uh, you know, we have a lot of black people who obviously but, support Trump. Right, so. understand this, mm -hmm. no one got deleted from urban shop shooters. Mm -hmm. We removed people from that page and put them on our community page. We have over 22 pages of urban shop shooters. Right. We have urban shop shooters, um, Firearms education and training. Right. We right. have urban shop shooters. Yada yada yada. Yeah. So am I getting am I getting kicked out of this thing right now? Because I'm sure there's a bunch of people like, wait, let me go check out and see what Hank Strange said. I, I had <laughs> let, me go, let me go verify this. I had over 100 <laughs> yeah. people that I moved 
from different pages just so we can keep the conversations fluid. That didn't okay. mean that you got kicked okay. out of urban shop shooters. You know, that means that we took you off the main page because that's our recruitment page. Okay, because the, because look, you know, this is an issue in the black community, um, and then the and and in the 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 black section of the Second Amendment gun, you know, or gun community, however you want to do it, amongst mm -hmm. black people, there's you know, I'll be honest with you, look, there's white guys who are gun guys, Second Amendment guys, they didn't vote for Trump, you know, exactly. um, a lot of them didn't vote at all, <laughs> you know, nobody I'm one likes. Of those nobody likes hillary <laughs> you know so i mean this is like this is a thing that people are fighting about but what i want to be clear is what is the stance of urban sharpshooters in regards to the political leanings or you know the political actions that the the members of of urban sharpshooters take during our recruitment process we didn't want a lot of conversations and negative conversations or indifference to come up about politics. Mm -hmm. So because we have different ages, it's nothing wrong with the community. Ages. Right. Yeah. That's how okay. urban shop shooters. Okay. But you're not limiting. So, so, so those people, were you limiting their conversations about this one particular thing? Or when they get moved over, they can't have any conversations on the main page? No. The, the, the urban, we, we have um, urban firearms community, which is our community. Page. Mm -hmm. We move people over there because it's a more broader community. On the main page that we use for recruitment, we okay. don't want people to see the infighting is caused by something. Okay, I understand. Okay, we, I think we, we just okay. created a page called Urban Shop Shooter Sons of Allah because we okay. have a lot of guys that's Muslim. Sometimes right. religion and politics can cause to be infighting. sensitive. Right. right. So okay. what we wanted to do, we wanted to create a page for everybody so their points of view wouldn't okay. cause indifference with others right that but you're mean, not you're not censoring or you're not attempting to control the political no. uh beliefs or 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 decision making that um the members do right no 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 no, okay. no. The only thing did you did, did you vote for trump no i did not sir okay did, you didn't vote for okay what about you lucian let's get this on the record is he there Looks like he's me okay. He Lucian is actually in a in a freaking he's in a freaking grocery store, and it sounds like he's trying to kick it to to someone in this store while we're we're doing this is important business we're doing here, man. Oh, it, it's probably important. better that he's look, in that store getting his. Head I'm one of those dudes. I tell you, I'm one of those dudes. I ain't vote at all, and I'm gonna tell you why I didn't vote. Okay, you didn't vote at all. Okay. Hell no, I ain't vote because neither one of those people talked about student loans. Mm-hmm. Then nobody touched that subject. So I said, you ain't talking about helping those um, college grads get no jobs? Oh, okay, you ain't talking about you know reducing this debt you got? Fuck it, I'm going home. I stayed home. All right. Yeah, and you you know one, you're entitled to that. You're free to do right. that. I think I think there's lots of people out there who agree with you, and not just you know this is not a color issue. I think there's a lot of people. I know a lot of people like that who agree with you. I know a lot of um, you know ex-military guys who are like yeah fuck this. I'm just not even gonna. I'm not gonna vote. I'm not gonna make the um, you know the. I'm not gonna choose the lesser of two evils and all that. You know I don't really want to make this particular um, discussion that we're having about you know why we did whatever we did because it's mm -hmm. all said and done at this point. But I just right. thought that I thought that that was something for us to cover on. So uh, Lucian, I want to hear from your mouth. Um, you know the subject that we were talking about here. I want what, what's your opinion of all of this? That's going about on? you know the Donald Trump thing. Yeah, because, uh, you know, this did come up in the group. I saw that. And I think, some. you know, what happens is feeds going through Facebook and you see stuff and people could, you know, take that like, oh, they're kicking out all the, the guys. You know, maybe these guys are becoming real radical inside of urban sharpshooters. Now, you know, I respect you and he, 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 and my brother. I love my brother very much, but I don't give a damn. To mm -hmm. be honest with you, because don't nobody pay my bills. Mm -hmm. okay, I'm be honest with you. Absolutely, man. You're you're 100 percent entitled to your opinion. Right. And I'm just saying, you know, yeah. I can't call neither one of those motherfuckers and ask for a job, so I don't give a damn. Mm -hmm. Okay. Keep the guns coming, keep the training coming, keep folks alive, help the community. Hey, look, that's good in my book. Right. Okay. So you're saying, I mean, so like, what's the important things to you? How important is the Second Amendment to you? I mean, it's all right. It's all right. Honest, okay. <laughs> it's not all that because when you go to mm -hmm. other countries. When you go to other countries, like let's take France, mm -hmm. the Eastern Bloc is way more mature than this country. This is a very young country. It is, it's nothing wrong with that. It's not a negative. It's not a positive. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you, the more refined a society comes, 
the more social. I'm not, I don't mean like socialist or anything. Like that. I mean like being able to understand the relationships between each other. Hey, man, the less people you're gonna be killing. Okay, so so, but I'm trying to understand what you're saying here. Are you saying that, for example, in France, the the um, Second Amendment or self defense issues are better dealt with in France? No, I'm not. No, nope, okay. I'm not saying that at all. I'm mm -hmm. just simply saying that it's a level. Each country has its own level of maturity. Right. No, I understand that. Look, listen. I was born in Guyana. I think there's people probably out there who hear your accent or whatever. We spoke about your accent. So, what what's your background, real quick? Just tell me what's your your ethnic well, background. My father from Port au Prince, my mother from Kingston, Jamaica. Ain't no big deal. Everybody okay, so you're you're a Haitian slash Jamaican. I'm a mix yeah. up. Yeah, you're a ja Haitian. That's I'm 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 yeah <laughs> I'm I'm making that official. Okay, so were you born? So were you born in America or were you born? Yeah, in I was actually. Let's talk about my background. My background yeah. is a very unique background. Uh, I have three mothers and three fathers. Now I know you're gonna look at that. and You're gonna say, "What the hell?" My my biological mother and my biological father. I don't know them. Okay. I never met them before. So were you born in were you born in America or outside of America? Right here in Chicago, Illinois. Okay. I was raised in a Christian household by my second set of um, parents, which had me since I was a uh, newborn. Okay. So but where does your accent come from? Were these people also? My family, Jamaican? yes. They were from there. They, they were. From so they were Jamaican? Yeah, Jamaican okay. and Haitian directly from there. Okay. Now, my third set of parents are right here in North Carolina, Ms. Claude and Miss Rhonda. And they are very mm -hmm. important to me. Um, they have always, uh, they even keep me in line, keep me in check. You know what I'm saying? Um, okay, I find it hard to believe that somebody keeps you in check, but whatever. <laughs> no, 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 seriously, she really does. Miss okay. Rhonda really does keep me in check. Um, you know, because sometimes like, I like to do my own thing. And uh, she keeps me grounded, and I'm very grateful to have. Okay, so um, have you? So now you were in the military. Did you serve overseas, or have you gone outside of no, America? Um, by the time I got to my unit, let me tell you, it's a very, let me, my story is a very unique story. Let's talk about this one. Here. Hey, look, we don't have another time. Here. Let's let's <laughs> well, should no. I, should I tell you? No, well, I, I want to know if you've been outside of America. I'm trying to establish yeah, a yeah, point gonna, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, I've been outside of America. Okay, where have you been to? Uh, France been to England, been to Amsterdam, a lot of different places over there, right? No problem. But not to Iraq. Let me tell you why. Because by the time I got to my unit, they just came back. Okay. That's right, because I had to go through not only one basic, but I had to go through two AITs to be able to do what I do in the military. Okay. So by the time I finished those two AITs and that basic, they just came back. Okay, so so here's what I want to establish from you, because, you know, you made a statement that kind of in my brain, the way I translated it is that you think that the um, the, the right to defend yourself or what we call here in America, Second Amendment, um, it, you're saying it's immature in America compared to other places in the world. And I want to know about this because I was born in Guyana. I, I, I left Guyana at a young age, went to live in England. On, like I left Guyana at five, went to live in England until I was, um, you know, uh, let me see. I was there until I was eight years old. Then I went to live in Nigeria until I was 11 years old. Then I came to America and I grew up in New York and I've traveled around America a little bit. And in, in my personal experience, I find that America right now on the face of this planet has the best rights. I'm not saying they're perfect, but it has the best rights when it comes to the Second Amendment. And it sounded to me like you were saying that that's not true. It's not always true, depending on where you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, being able to defend yourself is everybody's right. You know what I mean? Everybody should have that right. I believe that. But mm -hmm. when you really look at it, I think we can do better. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree with you. I think we should have more rights to defend ourselves. But what's, you know, I mean, this is kind of going like in a political direction. But why do we have that? You know, we have people in America who are actively working to take away our Second Amendment rights. Do you agree with that or do you think that's not yes, true? Yes, I do. I do agree with that. Okay, so who do you think those people are? Well, you got the UN, you got the Hillary Clinton, you got the, you know, it's, it's different people. Right. You know? Okay. Mm -hmm. but when you no, I understand. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. I mean, you're, it's not perfect. Look, the, a lot of this is not perfect. And I think part of the problem here is we don't talk honestly to each other. You know, we ju we just like fight and we throw slings and arrows at each other and we don't really talk and we don't really, you know, like there's this whole thing going on in America where we have to accept everyone's individuality and their right to be who they say they are. And I get that, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I get that and I'm fine with that. But I think that 
people aren't really, uh, you know, accepting our rights to, to believe that we have the right, it, we were born with it, if you want to call it inalienable, we were born with this right to protect ourselves, to defend ourselves. And I think absolutely, there's a lot of things that happen here in America where those rights are being eroded. And, you know, that's why when we were talking about mental health, you know, not too long ago, I brought up the point that I think that that's a mechanism that these guys are setting up to use and they're going to use it against a lot of us. When, when you look at the premise, um, I'm not saying everybody, like I'm mm -hmm. not a medical doctor. I'm not a psychiatrist. So mm -hmm. I can't, you know, say who has what. And I would mm -hmm. never try to do that. But what I am saying is based upon what I've seen online, mm -hmm. dealing with not only myself, but what my brother have seen, mm -hmm. some people are not right in the head. Oh, I, I, I mean... You know, obviously, you know, we do have, you know, genuinely mentally unstable people out there. Absolutely. I agree with you. But, you know, I think we're heading into a stage where a lot of people can, you know, can be brought to that. Point. Look, we've got doctors that want to know whether or not you're a gun guy. And that has nothing to do with anything. You know, we've also got doctors well, giving out. We, we've got like the listen, I'm going to tell you something. Here's what I think. You know, if you go back 100 years ago and you look at doctors and medicine and psychiatry, you know, mental illness that squarely falls within medicine, right? And if you go back 100 years ago and look at what those guys were doing, I mean, in, in psychiatry and mental health, they would take a spike and push it in physically into a person's yeah. brain. And today, when we look at that 100 years or even 50, I mean, they were doing this stuff up to like 50 years ago. If you look like at that today... Brain. Like yeah. That, yeah. yeah, if you look at that today, you say, oh, my God, those guys were just batshit. Those doctors doing that were crazy. You know, that was like quackery. That was like witch yeah. doctoring or something like that. Yeah. Well, I think when we go 50 years into the future or 100 years into the future and they look back at our time now where – the, every time you take your kids to the doctor, the doctor says, hey, let's put them on this ADHD medicine. Let's do this. Yeah, let's yeah, do that. Yeah, it's the same thing. So uh, that's the reason why, like, I want to bring that up, that there's things that people, these guys are not intending on losing this battle. And there's things that people are bringing up or, or inventing and mechanisms that they're putting in place to take guns away from people. And no, like all this stuff that we're talking about, the number one thing that I'm concerned with is that human beings need the right to defend themselves. This is very important. Without the, right, without the ability to defend ourselves, we don't have anything else. No, I, I, and I, I totally agree with you. Uh, I believe everything what you're saying wholeheartedly based upon the system that we are using in this particular society is very much warranted, uh, the Second Amendment or whatever. But I, I kind of long for the day when, and I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a fucking tree hugger or nothing like that. Don't mm -hmm. get me But I'm kind of longing for the day when we can finally say enough is enough. Enough of the fucking killing. You know, I'm, 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 all, I'm all for dropping convicts. No problem. Everybody knows this. I do whole blocks, right? But at what point do we stop and say, you know what, we got to find another system, Jack. Gotta, I we think, well, I mean, part of that is what I'm trying to establish here. You know, I think a, a lot of it, it, look, it's us. We have to make that cho the, those choices, us as the human beings, you know, and that's why I'm doing this particular thing, because I want, we have to talk to each other, because what's happening, I think, in the in the gun community in general, not just the black gun community, that's not what, it's kind of like, you know, uh, I guess it's fortuitous, right? You can't escape from being black. This is the thing you're born into. And it's just the way that it happens that like this first thing that I'm doing here, I've done hangouts before, but this first particular thing that we're doing centers on that. But, but my thing is for the entire gun community, we got to deal with the problems that we have. And it's not a magical solution. It's just, we have to talk to each other and we have yeah. to respect each other and we have to respect each other's rights and freedom to be who we are and do what we do. So now, like when people ask me about what you're doing, I, you know, my, my response is, look, you know, this guy has the right to do what he has to do and people have the right to, to come down against it. But you know, well, as let's, a let's talk about what I do. Let's okay. talk about it. Mm -hmm. why, why do I use real guns? There's something special that happens. And I always tell people it's scientific. Everything I'm gonna do is gonna be based on science, nothing else. Mm -hmm. The synapses in the brain process different. The neurotransmitters, the, the adrenaline, the chemicals, the biochemical things that occur within the body are very different. Yeah, I, I absolutely give you that. I think that's 100 percent. That's 100 percent true. It's just like, for example, uh, when we shoot at targets, 
you know, we try to shoot at these like, you know, innocuous kind of targets that don't have faces and stuff like that. And I understand why people are doing that. And I understand what regulations as ranges and all that, that. But I had this conversation with Lola the other day because, you know, there may be targets that make us feel uncomfortable. And I said, Lola, you're training to kill people. I mean, you don't want to have to kill someone. Let's, 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 let's watch our dialogue yeah. here. Because uh, if I was a, an attorney, I would use that against you. I swear I yeah. would. But that's but I, I mean, I, I get that. But the reality is, if you train, if you're going to if you're going to buy firearms, I believe you should train. You could do whatever you want to. You don't you could go you could go to the gun store. This is what happens a lot. Someone goes to the gun store. They buy a Glock or, you know, Smith and Wesson, a SIG, whatever it is they want to buy. They buy a box of ammo. They don't get training ammo. I was just talking, you know, to 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 some people about that they just get like they go right to the defensive ammo they don't even get like a couple of boxes so they can test the defensive ammo they just buy some defensive ammo put it in their gun they don't know whether or not that's even going to work in their gun and then they put it away they have the right to do that they have that right but yeah. i recommend that people train the reality the reality of this is is what are you training for what are you train are you training to to shoot a tree a piece of paper are you training on shooting some inanimate object? No. This is the reality. Well, this is I the reality of what we're shoot, facing. Uh, bad people. Okay, because I don't want to use the term kill because it denotes a motive. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like you use the term neutralize. You use the term to stop, shoot to stop. Uh, death is a byproduct. Okay, I, I mean, I understand all of that. I mean, but, you know, I mean, these are just, these I mean, are just words. Anything right. that me, you, James say, it will be used against you in court. Guaranteed. Yeah, but we're, but and and I agree with you. But what I'm saying is, we're past that. <laughs> you no, know, I, so. I, I'm, 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 I guarantee you that if something look, if something happens to, if there's a situation that I'm in, there's tons of stuff out there that people can use against me. There's no way around it. They're gonna say, hey, this guy's a gun guy. Look at all these videos of him shooting full auto, doing all this kind of craziness. He wanted to 10%. do so. I don't. That's the last thing I actually want to do in my life. When I talk to people about this, I tell them, you know what? This is the last thing. There's no example of this that we see where people do this and, and it makes their life enjoyable. This is one of the things that's really tough for, for soldiers who have to go out there and, and do this kind of stuff that they have to deal with, even if these are bad guys, even if in their mind they're like, hey, these guys are horrible, that's a rationalization for the fact of the matter that they took human beings out of the world. And once you do this, there's so many different things that open up here. And I think that's why you know we're having this conversation. I think that's why some people feel uncomfortable. It absolutely feels uncomfortable. That's why people are scared to get into guns. You know, That's why people are intimidated by this because of well, what well, it all I, leads I to. I tell you what I find, uh, especially with, amongst um, women, uh, African-Americans, uh, and just people, a lot of people in general, the main reason why they don't want to shoot guns is not necessarily because they are afraid. Mm -hmm. They're tired of being looked down upon. They're tired of people talking to them any kind of way when they mm -hmm. go to these ranges. They're mm -hmm. tired of made it uh, to be feel insignificant as if they're stupid. They're tired. I, you know, th that is one of the reasons why I do what I do. When I, My attitude in this gun game, I didn't come in this gun game with this attitude. I came with this attitude. I have this attitude now because the gun game made me this way. I talk to these people that run the show the way I talk to them because I have to let them know that we are not stupid. Okay, so you're saying that this is all born out of a frustration that you have no, with the way that the gun world is working. Not a frustration. Mm -hmm. So how did the gun world? How did the gun world make you this way then? Let's talk about when you, as an African American, I go to the gun range, and they immediately talk to me as if I'm a second class citizen, as if, as if I'm a part of some kind of permanent underclass. And I'm not. And I let them know that I am not stupid. Do not fuck around and play with me. Okay. I'm serious, I will go upside your head. And, and so you feel like in every instance, that's because of the skin that you're wearing that people do that. I won't say because of the skin. I won't say because of the skin. I mm -hmm. would say because of some of the things that are associated with it, um, high mm -hmm. levels of violence. Um, right. You know, it's not wanting to go to school. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Things no, like I, I, yeah, I absolutely understand that. But do you feel that there's other groups of people that go to gun stores and gun ranges? And the, because, you know, I, I, I think that part of this is how some of the people who work in these places are, right? That they don't, it's not just black people that they look down on. They look down on anyone. Like there's a lot of guys who work there. They're in their mind. They're some kind of super tactical ninja. 
you know, and anyone who comes in there that doesn't come up to their standards, you know, they automatically look down on them. Yeah, so I, I talk to white people, I talk to women, I talk to, to, to lots of different people that when they go to gun stores or when they go to ranges, they're intimidated by these people who try to talk down to them or, you know, or try to like talk like, oh, I know, I know all this stuff, right? You know, that big blowhard guy that you meet in the gun store that might have been like in the, you know, in the military or he might have done this thing or that thing and he's a real badass, you know, and, and when you come across the people that way, they, they, they could you know, easily wind up feeling the way that you do, even though, yeah, some of it could be because of color. I think some of it is just the attitude of those yeah. people. And, and it is, and I agree with you 100%. I do not disagree at all. Uh, I think that that's one of the reasons why I decided to shoot over at Blackstone, even though we had this little tobacco or whatever. I chose to shoot there because of the way they treated not only me, but the people that I brought there. So they treated you well, is what you're saying? Exceptionally well. I, I, I cannot stress that okay. enough. So what's the status of your relationship with those guys now? Are you still banned um, from this well, place? I, I would hope. Uh, I know what the employees, uh, they always say, hey, I love this guy. He's a great shooter. Um, I like to call him the old man. He's an old Marine, old school Marine, too. Um, he's a good guy. Um, the uh, uh, I don't know if he's the owner, but the, the higher up guy that I did speak with, hey, he's a great guy. Yeah, okay, just be careful. You're like, you're getting into the light there, so we're having a tough time seeing you. I'm sorry, the light's man. going right into the camera. Yeah, okay, so, um, you know, here, here's a question I want to ask you before we switch back to James. You know, um, are there people, this is one of the questions, like, uh, there's been a bunch of questions here. I'm sure we there's, like, tons of questions. That, how long have we been doing this, Lola? Okay, so we've been doing it for like two hours. There's tons of questions that come in from people. But here's one of them. Are there people out there now that are trainers that you would train with? Oh, my goodness. Let's talk about that. Um, I wish I could, if I could dig him up and bring him back alive, it would be Louis Arbrock. I would love to train with him, uh, South African trainer. Uh, if I could shake hands with Instructor Zero, I would definitely shake his hand. Um, Sonny uh, Puzikas. Right, a very talented uh, shooter. I would love to sit in his class, and I swear I'd be the best student ever. You know, I'm like a kid when it comes to this, when it comes to learning. Uh, who else is out there? Um, yeah, Pat Rogers, a uh, very good guy. Uh, I have a guy here um, in Southport, uh, Defense Dynamics. I love him. He's a great guy. His wife mm -hmm. is a great shooter. Um, I even mm -hmm. wear a patch. You know, so mm -hmm. it's, it's a couple of people out there that I really like, but the vast majority of them ain't worth a damn shit. Okay. So I think one of the other questions is like, like people out there want to know that with this training that you're doing, the people that you're training, it, you know, do you accept any re responsibility for like, not like one, the flack that you're getting from people because of your unique, you know, unorthodox methods of training, but then also, you know, if things don't go right for these people and they go out there and let's say they don't only like wind up hurting themselves or not being able to defend themselves, let's say they wind up hurting some innocent person out there, you know, will you accept any responsibility for that? Or how do you, how do you feel about that whole thing? Okay. Here, let me tell you what goes on in Nevada session. Cause I have mm -hmm. the highest standard in the state. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm the only one with 12, what nine batteries of tests. They do nomenclature. When I read the law, I read it word for word. We spend two hours on law. I don't even mm -hmm. show video. I do all teaching. Okay. What are your, what are your rules of uh, firearm safety handling? Well, that would depend upon the level of the client. Okay. Because if you have a beginner coming in, yeah, you go ahead and give them the four levels of safety, right? But when he starts or she starts getting into the intermediate range, you start getting into the advanced range, uh, we're going to have to start understanding why we're going to be breaking some of these rules. Take one of the rules. I'll give you one. I want to give you all my shit. You know what I mean? You got hey, mm -hmm. to come see me. But just, mm -hmm. here's one. that It says um, never um, well, point. Well, we can use that one. But keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot, right? Okay. Now, for the beginner, that's a great rule, excellent rule. But when you start talking about intermediate and advanced, well, what happens when you have a hostage? Mm -hmm. You have to have your finger on the trigger because you ought to take out that slack in order to reach that wall. And when you break that shot to minimize the biological and mechanical deviations of the gun. Mm -hmm. So now that rule goes out the window. Yeah, that makes sense. You see what's going on? And, mm -hmm. you know, never point your firearm at something that you're not willing to destroy. Well, I'm looking to destroy me, a, a convict who's a flesh and blood being. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Right. So 
We okay, so you do, you do have you have rules. Yeah. You teach these rules, okay? So now in regards to the responsibility that like so let's say that there's someone that's training in this on orthodox methods that you have. Now I'm not talking about like I know there was the there was a situation where you were pointing this gun at someone. I think we can move past that. You know, um th th this thing that you were showing that you're developing, right? Are you you are you teaching that to anyone right now? No, uh, I just finished developing it and waiting on this training knife so I can go ahead and do this Bunkai video for you guys. Um, the e EKC, EDA, that is only strictly for advance. Okay. Because you really cannot justify that amount of lethality in a courtroom. Mm -hmm. This type of lethality is the absolute, like, you in some trouble and you need to get the fuck out. Okay, so what level, so like, I mean, how do you look at all this stuff if like in the process of your training, someone winds up getting hurt or in the process of someone that you train that, that went out to defend themselves and uh, I go something goes wrong? It. Okay. I go to court because see, I keep a record. Mm -hmm. ask, ask my brother. We take, mm -hmm. I take fingerprints on each one of the targets, all of their paperwork so I know that is the only signature that I, that I take is a fingerprint. Everyone fingerprint different. What so do you mean you take brother. fingerprints? So you take you mean you're taking fingerprints of your clients? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, is I, that I, is I, that I, what I, happened when you trained with uh, with uh, Lucian, James? Let my brother tell you. He tell you that. Yeah. 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 If I say it, they ain't gonna believe me for nothing. Yeah. yeah. When, when, he had, when he comes, he has a thick packet like this. Uh, the fingerprints, like I said, it's uh, it's not what you would see. That he okay, so and you, and you guys, when you guys trained with him, you submitted your fingerprints and all that. No, kind we of didn't stuff. submit them, but we looked at the oh. whole process. That he had. Like I said, I looked at his okay. work. Okay, we looked at the brick test. What we did was more like the understanding of what he teaches. Um, we had a classroom session in the house, and then we mm -hmm. went to the range. Basically, we just basically trained from shooting from the holster. You know, okay. Played around a little bit with the rifles, right. but our introduction to what he does is he brought everything that he has and laid it on the table, and then we went through the process. Okay, so I just want to understand this, Lucian. So when someone's a client, when they're training with you, you're gathering this kind of like uh, data on them, like fingerprints, etc. Profile. Okay. Every so what is so like? I mean, I'm I'm a little concerned about that, to be honest with you. I mean, no, I pro I have to profile you. Okay. Because the reason, like, take it. To, if I do a therapeutic shooting session, session, right, which I invented that, don't nobody on this earth do that, right? Mm -hmm. Take a young lady. I'm not gonna tell you who. She's a victim of a triple murder homicide. Mm -hmm. She's scared to press the trigger. I have to know that. That's pertinent information. You see what I'm saying? That lets mm -hmm. me know the relationship between people, bad guys, good guys, the gun, and me and this woman here. Okay to know so when i know that she's in that kind of pain that kind of psychological scarring that kind of physical scarring i have to use that be able to help her overcome yeah but okay i understand that what i'm i mean i think that's the process of, of like teaching something to anyone you have to understand that but what i'm concerned with is that you're collecting uh, th this data on people i mean and what makes this safe i mean what if someone comes in raids you collects this data and then they have fingerprints or this information. Now they don't do that. They ain't, ain't, ain't going to happen. How? Well, what, what's my guarantee of that if I'm a client? The guarantee ain't going to happen. That's for sure. Uh, how, how do you go? Do you have this? Do you have all this data in some kind of like box that has Storage. like a dead man switch <laughs> that if you let go of it, the stuff like burns I, up? Know, I I mean, I I'm paranoid. I'm paranoid. I want to know. Switch. I put a, a mercury pressure switch under that thing if I could, but I always lock it up in the storage. Okay. Off yeah, I'm just concerned because I'm pretty sure that there's people out there that would be concerned about. No, that I don't. Level. I don't take a social security or nothing like that. I don't even have your driver's license information. I don't even have that. All I need is a name and thumbprint. That's the only thing I need. Okay. I don't need anything else. Okay, I understand. All right. So listen, we've been doing this for about two hours. I'm gonna give James an opportunity to to like get his final thoughts out there, and then I'm gonna come back to you, Lucian, and let you you know have the last word. So James, uh, tell us what you what do you want us to take away from this whole thing? What do you want to make sure that the people out there know before you sign off here? Definitely, man. Thank you for um, uh, inviting me to show. Uh, 
And uh, can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. Just okay. I'll speak up a little bit louder. We, we definitely wanted to paint our own narrative in this story. Because it seems too often that everybody wants to tell a father's story besides father. I hear every day how dangerous he is. He shot somebody in class. He was never in the military. He was never an instructor. Um, he's just bad for the brand and the image. And I say, well, I can't go by what everybody else is saying. I got to go by what I've actually experienced, what I've seen, and what I feel about the guy. I think he's very misunderstood. Um, he has a lot of talents that a lot of people don't want to see for whatever reason, and they misjudge him or they prejudge him by maybe he wasn't in special forces, or maybe he hasn't trained with Larry Vickers. And in order to establish yourself, these are some of the milestones that you have to take. Where I come to his defense is I see so many people place falsehoods on his name that I know it's not true. A lot of people know it's not true. And we wonder, why is this being allowed? You can prove people wrong, and yet they still keep the same lie going over and over again and try to discredit it, where it becomes no longer a matter of safety, it becomes personal. Right. Okay, I understand. I mean, and that's the reason why I wanted to give you guys this this platform here and, you know, why I'm grateful that you came on. You know, I have my own style of, like, asking questions and stuff like that. And, you know, I appreciate you guys subjecting yourselves to that. So, and, and then I encourage anyone that wants to find out more about you and your organization and what you do to go check out the Urban Sharpshooters Gun Club and uh, see what those guys have going on. Check them out. Make your own decision. You know, before you do anything in life, you, you have to realize that you're responsible for what you do. Okay, so Lucien, uh, I'm going to ask you the same question. I'm going to give you the final words here before I stop the broadcast. When I stop, we're going to, everyone else is going to stop seeing us, but we'll still be here. So still hang out, you know, but. Um, I'm, and ahead, I may man. drop out because of my battery, but, I, you know, what, what we want me to we we see. Well, go ahead and tell people what you want to take away from this. You know, what do you want people to know at the end of all this, having looked at this? Okay, let me first give a nice shout out to, again to my my brother, James McCoy. I give a uh, shout out to all my parents out there that helped raise me or whatever. Uh, a nice shout out to Vibe Cartel. That's my, I don't know him, but I love him very much. Okay, Lisa Hyper, the whole Gaza crew, I hope all of them get back go. together soon. All right, uh, Hell Real, Drip Set. Julius Santana, I love them very much. I like oh, boy. Shit. Shanine <laughs> Allen, I, I wish that woman the best. She's the best looking woman I've seen in a long time. I a single person. Um, I, who, who else is um, Instructor Zero, all these good people in the gun game or whatever. Um, keep training. Don't let nobody tell you what you can and what you can do. Big big thing up to urban sharpshooters. If you're out there, you, I hate to use this term, but if you black, all right? <laughs> you're Latino. Uh, Asian American, homosexual, whatever your thing is, you join Urban Shop Shooters, we're going to take care of you. That's just what the fuck it is. I love Amir, my camera guy for Urban Shop Shooters. I love you very much. I'm strange. Uh, and uh, I don't want to talk about your wife. I ain't going to say nothing about that. Ain't none of my business. <laughs> that's right. okay. Lola, Lola. Lola's here. Hi. That's, that's, that's as far as it's going to go. Hi. That's it. Okay. All right. And uh, all my EP, my executive protection dudes out there, um, I love you guys. Let's stay safe. Let's stay positive. Let's um put some unity in a gun game, and look, I'm look, I'm gonna go have sex. I am, I'll be back. I, I catch. You okay, okay. So that's the takeaway. All right. Okay. So okay, Lucia. All right. So, <laughs> and he actually hung up. Okay. So listen. Drop the mic. Yeah. Before before I end this, um, I just want to you know thank everyone for watching and participating, sharing. I know that we 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 discussed some very sensitive issues here, and we mentioned some people's names. And um, if there's anyone out there that you know would like to come on and do something with me, and uh, you know give their side of the story, I invite you to do that. Reach out. You know I'm Hank Strange on a lot of stuff. I'm on Facebook and Instagram and all that kind of stuff. And you can email me at hankstrange at gmail dot com. Uh, I want to thank Lucian obviously for coming in here and um, you know coming onto the grill of all these questions. And I want to thank James McCoy because he's the person that I reached out to to help arrange this. Uh, I want to thank you, James. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, I'm out of here. I'm going to stop the broadcast. I'm Hank Strange. Thanks for watching. Peace out.